Hey everyone and welcome to Television from the Multiverse DC TV podcast from Mail Fuzz TV. I am Peter and returning, this is the first time we've recorded since Connor got back from vacation. Late last night, I believe. Very late. Very, Very late. late last night, yes. Yeah. Still kind of tired. Suck it up. I <laughs> up. I'm here, aren't I? We've got a backlog. <laughs> Start with all those DC shows that we need to talk about. Coming up on this week's show, we have the first episode of Titans. And yes, we're recording this on Friday, which means the second episode is actually already out. Just bear with us. Next week, we'll be back to record on Thursday. And you'll still get the show on the day the new episode goes out. But that's just that's where the cutoff is. That's where our weekends or begins. You know what I mean? That's where the, that's where the line is. Blame CW. Yes. Blame CW. So... Yeah, so we we have Titans, we have um, Supergirl, the uh, season premiere of Supergirl, we have the season premiere of Arrow, yay, everyone Which, be excited. Fun fact about Arrow, fun this fact? is the first episode in like, since since we started this show at least, and maybe even before that, before that we didn't well. watch together. This is the first time we've not watched Arrow together since sometime early season four. It's been a while, it was, it was a... It was a different experience. Because I remember watching it together during Felicity standing up out of the wheelchair. Oh, you're right. Yes, we and that definitely was, watched that together. And that was mid-season four. So, yeah, it's been a long time. And that was weird. Um, it, Probably it weird that, for you, because I was still just hammered. Yeah, well, that's the problem, though. I mean, I, I don't I, I don't get drunk as well. I, I just kind of have you making stupid drunk comments to kind of spice it up a little bit. So it it made it a bit more of a tedious experience, I have mm. to admit. But hey, so we 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 got Arrow, and then of course we got episodes of Flash and Black Lightning as well. Uh, the other episode twos this week. So that's what we're going to do. But we do have some news. Al- almost a full schedule. Almost full. We just have one more show to add on to the list, and that's Legends of Tomorrow, which is launching for next episode. So yes. So we'll have six shows next week. <laughs> I'm a little concerned about the runtime of these episodes. I'm not gonna lie, because we we have a size limit that we can go over a little bit because there's like a pool, there's like a pool of extra data we're allowed to like dip into, but that quickly goes away. So <laughs> I'm a little bit worried with six episodes every week to talk about about that size. Yeah, these, so, these might get split in two. Yeah, so if this starts being like you know episode, I think this is like forty nine or fifty, you know part one and two just. On the audio, a-, a-, a and B. Yeah, the the video will be fine. The video will always be one part, but the the audio may have to split. <laughs> but anyway, so we do have some do have some news as well to talk about. Um, we have some some juicy kind of news as well. Before we get to the real juicy stuff, though, there was like four different casting stories this week for Pennyworth. That's right, you forgot Pennyworth you existed. Obviously, I was just saying, we were just saying I've been away for a week. Mm-hmm. I am so out of the loop. I have seen one poster, and that's it. That is all I know for any of this news. Mm. So, totally fresh to me. And you're right, I did forget Pennyworth was a thing. As did I, when until this stuff popped up, because, you know, like Pennyworth. You're telling me it's really happening? Uh, it's epics. Epics are doing this with Warner Brothers TV. Uh, so, Pennyworth himself, Alfred Pennyworth, is going to be played by Jack Bannon. And then we got news that Ben Aldridge has been cast as young Thomas Wayne, who's just hired Alfred. And then we got Ryan Fletcher and Hainsley Lloyd Bennett have been cast, although we don't know what their their roles are yet. And then finally, we got the the villain, the villainess of the of the show. Uh, maybe you've heard of this person. It's a it's a British pop singer, apparently. Uh, uh, Paloma Faith. Paloma you... Faith, yeah, sure. Yeah, used to me, but. <laughs> Yeah, I know who she is. She's going to be the villain in Alfred and Pennyworth. I mean, she's a decent enough singer. I've listened to a few albums. I couldn't comment on her acting ability. Well, we'll but find out. Really? Yeah, she, she's she been cast as Bet Sykes, a cruel adversary who will test the courage of young Alfred Pennyworth and his new boss, Thomas Wayne. What the hell is this show? Hello, my <laughs> faith is the villain. What? I thought this show was weird enough when you told me it was a young Alfred show that was real. <laughs> oh dear. So yeah, that's that's your Pennyworth news. So here's something juicy though. Lex Luthor is coming to Supergirl. Oh damn. 
Oh, this new you? Okay, there you go. I, I told you, I'm completely out of the loop. Yeah, Lex Luthor, the, 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 the producers of Supergirl announced it on Instagram, maybe? Twitter? I don't know, one of the social medias. Uh, put out a joint statement saying that casting will begin shortly for Lex Luthor, who will appear on Supergirl in Season 4. So, that's a thing. So, probably mid-season, or a little bit after, at this point, for casting. Well, they're shooting the crossover right now, so I think it'll be after Christmas for sure. Okay, fair enough. I didn't know, I didn't know if they were shooting the crossover a bit earlier, just because the schedules are lining. Oh, oh no, we've, we've got a set photo to talk about from the crossover. The set photos? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Just, just, you can rel- just, just react as it comes. Just react as it comes. It's fine. I don't know what's going on. I don't like this. I'm usually, I usually see most of this in advance. So, so we're getting Lex Luthor, which is cool, and it's you know th- at this point we'll have had a Lex, a Lois, and a Clark. Like just just cast Perry and be done with it, <laughs> which ties into the next bit of juicy news. Although this one's more of a rumor, and the original source is a little bit questionable in terms of authenticity, but other sites like Screen Rant have been reporting it based on this source and saying, hey, this is apparently a rumor that's going around. Uh, but the CW are considering a Superman show. And I have to admit, this this news came before the Lex Luthor thing, and I do have to admit that they, them casting Lex Luthor made me feel like there was a bit more credence to the rumour, because it's like, well, if you've got a Lex Luthor now, I mean, at this point, we're, we've, we've cast half the show. Yeah, I know. Actually, the, the set file you're on about, is it to do with Superman? Yeah, he's got, he's got a black suit. He's got a black... Uh... Costume. Yeah, I, I I saw a tweet mentioning a black suit, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's that, and I can see where this is going. He's got a black suit, and annoyingly, he's got a V-neck, which I'm not pleased about. <laughs> yeah, what was the you you said? Oh, you know, you you didn't really like the original source. Where do who was it? Most of that I don't like. I just never heard of them. They're called Fandom oh, right. Wire. <laughs> I'm like, who are all these people? Yeah. Okay. I I agree. It, if you told me a few months ago, I'd say, nah, not a chance, far-fetched. But Lois, Lex, it's, it's pieces are falling into place. Yeah, apparently uh, the Elseworlds crossover, which is also a backdoor pilot for Batwoman, is also apparently serving as a bit of a backdoor pilot for a Superman show. And if audience receives Superman and Lois well, it could lead to a, could lead to a show. Um, and again, like I wouldn't have given this much thought, but Lex being cast as a thing, but you add on the movie side of this, the movie news that they're they're basically shelving Superman for a while, because uh, the, there was yeah. news reports this past week or so that Affleck and Cavill are both done, and they're looking for a new Batman, but they're not looking for a new Superman, and if they've basically given up on the movies for a while, that's kind of TV's chance to swoop in and be like, yeah, we'll do some Superman. Yeah, that's how we got Smallville. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Hopefully, this time it works out for the better. Yeah. Uh, quality aside, that that is basically how we got Smallville. They went, yeah, go on then. Uh, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting having two super shows. Um, at the same time, how I do actually, you differentiate them, right? I think you differentiate them, but here, here was my suggestion. Um, and this is this goes beyond just these two shows, but I think having two super shows really adds to this idea. I put this out on Twitter this this week. Is that we've been saying how they have t- the seasons are too long, right? And we we would prefer thirteen episode seasons. And I was thinking, what if you what if they, they shared a slot? What what if you had like you know Supergirl on from October to you know February, and then you had Superman on for thirteen weeks after that? And you could do that, you know, say say Arrow and Batwoman shared a slot, and then so on. You know, just pair them all up. No, I agree. You only need well, but you you still need an even number. Well, what would we be on? So we're on. Well, this would be seven. Minute? This would be seven, be seven with Batwoman, so need- Superman. One more. Yeah, okay. Because, let's, let's be honest here, seven at one time is a lot to take in. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how we cope with that. Yeah, whereas if you say, no, 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 there's, there's only four at a time and they alternate. And hell, you could even go as far as to say, how about instead of like having blocks, what, what if they just alternate week to week? And that way they can have a new episode of everything every week and they'd never fall behind because, it, you know, the next the other show would kind of make up for the lack. Or, uh, it, they, they would hate that for scheduling advertising. Sure. Okay, what about this then? Instead of having, like, two solid blocks of the seasons, do kind of what they did with Legends and Supergirl where you'll get, like, maybe seven or eight episodes of Supergirl. And then seven you'll get, and a six. Yeah. So you, yeah. You, you split them both in half, basically, and have them 
alternate chunks. Yeah, the the Walking Dead system. Kind of, yeah. Um, but I, I feel like it'd be less annoying here because it would just be like, no, no, that's just a DC slot. We just expect a DC show. Yeah. And, you know. I don't know. I, think, I don't necessarily see them doing this. I was just thinking, man, they're going to have seven shows potentially, and they're going to have two that are both super shows. They're going to have Superman and Supergirl potentially. I, I think at that point you say, well, how about instead of having 23 episodes of both? No, it's because obviously we said when Batwoman was announced that, well, I mean, is this kind of spelling the end for Arrow? Because they're kind of doing the same thing. But at the as... same time, they, they have shown no intention of wanting to cancel anything. Right, because the CW never cancels anything if it can help it. <laughs> Not unless they've got a spin-off already kind of in the in the works. <laughs> Which is crazy that this hasn't had anything cancelled yet, given that it's all spin-offs, essentially, of each yeah. other. Um, I, I think the crossovers are big moneymakers, of course. We always bring that up. That's why they love having the, the, the bouquet of shows on at the same time, because they can yeah. have the, the big ratings boost. Because it, it was only this time last year when they were saying, no, no, we'll never have more than four on at once. And we've got five on right now. Or we will next week. Exactly. <laughs> didn't, they didn't last long. It didn't. And I feel like since, they're the, since they've changed the thing where it's not one per night and now it's like two doubles and a single, we could easily go to three doubles and it wouldn't feel like they're, you know, taking up more nights, if, if you will. Not really. It's it's just, this is the DC part of the week. Yeah. Uh, so, who, so who knows? But, I mean, it's still just a rumour. I wouldn't necessarily, you know, expect it for sure, but with Lex being cast, it's like, well, I mean, at that point, you've basically cast three of your lead roles. All you need now is a Perry. I mean, Jimmy is on Supergirl. He might go back. Who knows? He might go over to Superman. But he's... Hey, they might have something to do on that show. Yeah. Um, hey, don't spoil your thoughts on Jimmy in the season premiere now. We're not there yet. <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> I didn't even consider what his, his role in this episode was. I was just thinking of... Yeah, the running joke that he has become. Season's gone past. To be, we we make fun of uh, Jimmy for that, but he's 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 only half as useless as Thea was for years on Arrow. Yeah, but we have more than enough to laugh about with Arrow. That's true. Yes, yes Arrow has a lot more faults to make fun of. <laughs> now you mentioned a poster earlier. Yeah. Th- yes. The poster for the crossover. Uh, so it's called Elseworlds, and the poster has has Grant Gustin with the Green Arrow hood on. And Stephen Amell in the Flash suit with his with his uh you know stubble and all his stubble yeah, beard. He was teasing this a few weeks ago. He was saying, "Oh, I just got fitted for for my new costume for the, for the crossover." Mm. And everyone was like, "What? What, what are we doing here? Do, why do they need a whole new costume?" Do you know? I wonder if that's why Flash got a new costume in the first place. He's like, "Oh, we're going to have to make a new one anyway to fit him. We might as well just do a new one for you at the same time and just have them match." Could be. You know, rather than try to recreate the one they've already got for him and the new act, you know, the other actor, just yeah, yeah. do it at the same time. I don't know. Uh, whereas arrows is really easy to do. It's a hood. <laughs> it's just where it's like a jacket with a hood. some hood and leather. Yeah, <laughs> it's not fitted. You don't have to fit it to him the same way that the flash right. is like molded right. onto him. Uh, but yeah, so it's, it's. I mean, it's a disturbing image. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I kind of hate it. Because it scares me. I'm I'm un, I'm unnerved by it, but um, it did make me immediately go, "What was Supergirl? It's a three it's a three show crossover. Why is Supergirl not involved in this?" And then someone did do a Photoshop of of Arrow and Supergirl being swapped, and he had yeah, the long blonde hair. That was disturbing. Uh, Katie Lotz even tweeted that one out. She was like, "Oh, this yeah, is the best did. part of the crossover." <laughs> yeah. You're burying the lead here. Uh, I, I I do love some of the ones. Social media like um. What's his name that plays a uh, Mick on on Legends? I'm I'm blanking on his name now. Mm. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. But he put out Dominic Instagram. Purcell. Oh, okay, you got there. He put out a big Instagram post like a couple of weeks ago, going, "Hey, yeah, season one was kind of shit. I was gonna <laughs> leave, and then they showed me the season two scripts, and I went, okay. And now I'm like, and he's like, now I'm having the most fun I've had in a job in years." Because Bebo wills it. <laughs> exactly. Because he, 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 he even referenced Bebo in, in the post. Hmm. Yes. yes. So, yeah, lots happening. Crossover. We know it's a Bat- Batwoman backdoor pilot. I mean, it's, it's, now it's apparently also a Superman backdoor pilot. But do you know what's funny about that one is that it feels more natural for Superman because he's already been there. He's, he's, he's not like a new thing. They're just shoehorning into this. Like He's established. He exists. Yeah, because we, we didn't question it when they said he was in the episode. No. Oh. No, Batwoman's the big new thing. That's the thing that we're all going, oh, Batwoman, that's new and fresh and exciting. Right. Um, 
But uh, there was another set photo actually. Apparently, there's going to be a scene uh, on the Kent farm. Oh, cool! It was a uh, Melissa Benoist with uh, Superman and, and Lois, and they're on a farm, and it was like, oh, this is the Kent farm, and it was like, oh, this is fun. Okay. I don't know if they got okay. a man pack Kent, but that's what I say. Do do we know if the Kents are just still around? I mean, they could, yeah. I mean, they could, they could just say that, that you know they died of old age. It's been a while, and yeah, I mean, it's it's not uncommon for for the Kents to be gone. Or they, or they just say, "Oh, my Kent's on a trip or something, so she's not here." Yeah, no, exactly. So they can it, cast it, her for the, the the Superman show when the time comes. We we I don't think we've ever heard. No, it's never been brought up. I don't think. I don't think they've even been mentioned. Outside no. of some vague, like, oh, Clark was adopted like I was, kind of right. sentences. Right, I, I think it was just those, yeah. But, yeah. Well, but, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and then just last bit of news I just noticed before we came on here is that all about casting for Supergirl. Uh, they've cast a sister for Jimmy. Jimmy's got a sister <laughs> showing up on the show. Uh, Kelly Olsen, who, despite the fact that Jimmy's had siblings in the comics, this appears to be a new creation for the show. Okay. Uh, so Kelly Olsen, they've, they've ca- cast uh, AZ Te- Tesfai, I'm going to say that as her name, uh, but she, she's going to be, be sister. Do you know what I will say? Mm-hmm. I do have a slight hatred of, oh look, here's a relative to a character that we've known for, you know, three, four seasons, and I don't recall him ever mentioning a sister. Um, Yeah, it's kind of a TV thing, right? It happens. I kind of hate it. Yeah. 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 How so, often do you mention you know, it, your it, siblings, it, though, to people? <laughs> sure, but I might mention to to you know uh, my, a group of my best friends. They, they, they're probably in in four years. I've probably mentioned them at least once or twice. We don't see every interaction he has with all these other characters. No, we don't. But we see enough that it feels weird that it's never been brought up. Unless they actually open it with, "No, no, we're in a bad place. I don't mention her. She's dead to me." <laughs> Well, sure, that's possible. <laughs> it's still cl- TV cliche, though, isn't it? Oh, as it is, it is a TV cliche. Um, as an only child, the whole thing is bizarre to me. <laughs> that's fair. I I never know what the right amount of like you know adults who have left home like what, what, you know what is the right amount of interaction with their siblings. I have no idea. I'm an only child. I mean, uh, I, I don't really. I, I see mine like twice a year. My siblings. Yeah. Uh, that's about it. It's different for everyone, though. That's the thing. Oh shit! It's a birthday. Quick, send something. Yeah, but some people haven't moved city like you have, though. Some people actually are still close enough to see them enough. To be fair, one of my other, I have two younger brothers. One of them has has left. You know, he's he's moved city anyway to somewhere else. So, uh, he's he's in a different country as well. And then uh, the, the youngest one's still at home, admittedly. So yeah, it's just you know, it's different for everyone. Some some people, their siblings are their best friends. They see them every day because it's just day to day life. And then some people, it's like ah, I can see them at weddings and funerals and maybe, maybe at Christmas. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a twice a year meeting. That's about it. Um, so maybe he hates his sister, <laughs> but that's or maybe maybe we'll get some excuse where she's nah, she's like a. She's a journalist who goes and travels and does all these weird safari things. I don't know. She's been... See, that would be even weirder to not mention. <laughs> right? Hey, yeah. Like, when but... you work. Okay, but uh... what if he says, oh, my sister's here. What if, the, what if Kara then responds with, oh, your sister, I've heard so much about her. Is she back from said trip? Oh, don't, <laughs> don't even. Don't even. I, 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 I want to give the show the benefit of the doubt. But already I'm going, okay. Is this better or worse than Lucy Lane just disappearing with without a trace? <laughs> it's worse. Okay. Because at least that all it takes is one line of dialogue. Okay, she's gone somewhere else. We don't uh, care. Okay, but is it better or worse than Maxwell Lord disappearing without a trace when he had a cliffhanger <laughs> at the end of season one? That, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just gauging. I'm just gauging and, and, and the level let, of bullshit. Let, let's not forget Morgan Edge either. Yeah, I mean he didn't have the cliffhanger though. At least he he just no, kind of didn't away. do anything. I forgive that though because I feel like they decided that he needed more time with them on Shield because of where they were going with the plot, and he had to just leave Supergirl. And, and I like yeah, Shield enough that I'm okay with Shield's that. Shield's a better show, so yeah, a lead slide. 
But hey, uh, all right, we should we should move on to the shows. We should start talking about shows and the hotly anticipated discussion. There's been there's been requests because normally if there's a new show starting, we'll do a separate thing for episode one quicker. You know, as soon as it comes out, we'll try and do an episode one thing and put it straight out so people can get the the, the hot take right away. But you were on vacation, uh, yeah. so there was no point. Matt would have filled in, but he was moving house the exact same weekend because everything has to happen at the same time. But because of that, it's taken us a week or and, a, and some change to finally get to Titans episode one of season one. It's called Titans put thought into that which yeah. i actually i'll dispute right away because this is a show where we're clearly not going to have them all together as a team until no maybe... that's that's what you call the the end of the season episode yeah right? either the end of the season or the one where they finally form so if it was episode seven fine if that's the one where they all come together and say we're a team now then great yeah. call it titans um full disclosure yes very drunk when watching this yes 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 so i so i've heard in fact actually i can tell you but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna get the message up because Connor messaged me <laughs> after he watched it. I again, I, I was I was away. Where I was staying had unlimited free drinks, and they were just pouring me refills mm. constantly. Uh-huh. So it wasn't even my alcohol. I was getting drunk, and it was just here. Have another one. So yeah, you know, that was not in a not in a very sober place. Let's just say that. I'm just looking for it. I'm scrolling and then, up. Sober enough to know that I hate it. Get out of the way. <laughs> oh, here we go. Right. So after he watched it, he sent me the following two messages. I saw. I, I just want to say, typing on a tablet screen when you're drunk is very, very hard, and autocorrect is not your friend. He said, "I was, period, it drink only fire that." New second message. But even Claude. And sometimes, you know, if he makes a few typos, I can still work out what he was trying to say. I legitimately had no clue what he was trying to communicate to me. <laughs> I had no clue. And I hadn't watched the episode yet. So I was I was like, Matt, is it, is it just frazzled his brain? Is that what it's done to him? <laughs> I was I was not quite drunk enough that I didn't remember sending the mail. I, I, I remembered sending it. Mm-hmm. And when I, I woke up and saw your your response go what what the hell are you saying basically i was like oh i know what i was trying to say the, the translation for that message in case anyone was wondering was i was not drunk enough for that no, not even close <laughs> oh dear um so obviously we, we weren't looking forward to this because the trailer was absolute garbage and the Wait, marketing in general was absolute we're starting garbage. this spoiler free right um, for, for a minute or two, I don't know. Or do you nah, want to die? because we're not putting it on its own thing, so I don't think there's any point. I think okay, just full cool. spoilers for. You know, okay, cool. The episode, uh, but yeah, so so we weren't looking forward to it because the marketing would be very bad. The trailers, especially, were really garbage. But it was getting oddly positive reviews. You know, the Rotten Tomatoes score was oddly floating, kind of reasonably high. Uh, although it's worth mentioning that they all the reviewers got at least three six episodes, something in that range. Right, okay. They got a few more. They didn't just get episode one. They at least got three. Because um, they were all talking about how it progresses in the first few episodes. So I, I think that's worth mentioning. Because it's entirely possible that whatever they're talking about is something that develops over the, the episodes. Um, so, I mean, Cara kind of summed up his feelings when he said that he wasn't drunk enough. Unless yeah, that was I... a compliment that I'm just not I'm misunderstanding. No, no, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> do you know how uh, long, long time viewers will know that when when we watch Arrow, I, I'm very drunk, and, and we have some some rules for a little drinking game. Oh yes. Yeah, we have. A, I've already got one for this show. Oh, what is it? Uh, every time one of our so-called heroes kills a character. <laughs> Look at you, Miss Starfire. Yeah, Starfire does just snap at his neck. Although, on top of that. She incinerates someone. And K- then K- smiles. Yeah, no, this is the thing. The incineration itself, her powers flare up, it's accidental. She's not like consciously aware she's doing it, right? Yeah, I, it's, I it, didn't drink at that point. Yeah. I was like, okay. But when the guy then, like, he's, he's, he's basically like ash and then he disintegrates. Like he's, like, he's like a stone statue of ash and then he just sort of falls apart. She then smirks as like, huh. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that, she's a psychopath. Yeah, that's when I down the, the, the can. <laughs> she's a psychopath. It's uh, it like, that's gone. Um, not my stuff. I am. 
I will. I will say. I want to start with some positives. Okay, there are a couple. There's some. Po- I don't think it's the complete unsalvageable train wreck that I thought it might be based on the trailer. I think this this falls into similar territory to the things I've said before about Snyder's Man of Steel or Tim Burton's Batman. I don't think they're bad movies. I think they are bad representations of those characters. Like it's a bad Batman movie. It's a bad Superman movie. Mm. But it's, it's an all right Tim Burton movie. It's, it's an all right movie. Yes. Um, Man, Man of Steel is not aged well for me. Every every time I see it or think about it, it gets worse and worse. Every every time I encounter That's it. Fair. I don't I don't hate it though. I hate it as a Superman movie. But I don't hate it as a movie. I was pointed out to me online this week. There's a really stupid line of dialogue in that movie, and it of never clicked. It right? What? As I said, of course there is. No, but no, it's a really specific one. That even when someone pointed it out, it took me embarrassingly long to notice why it was a stupid line of dialogue. And then when it clicked, I was like, oh, Jesus, who wrote that stupid line? Do I, but do but I, it took a minute. Know? If something Zod says to Superman, uh, I, I might paraphrase this slightly, but the, the main point of it I'll, I'll get, uh, this, only, this can only end one way, Cal. Either you die or I do. It's easier when you say it out loud, but see when I was staring at that on my on my screen, I was like, what's stupid about this line? I'm staring at it, I'm like, what's stupid about it? <laughs> and then I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> that's two ways. It's <laughs> two ways it's going to end. <laughs> it's such a stupid line of dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll never be able to watch that scene again without laughing because it's a stupid line. I won't. But either way, but I think that I, I can translate that feeling that I have with those okay. movies across to this show where I don't think it's an atrociously made show. I think it's it's not the worst TV show. I, 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 yeah, I have some atrocious elements, but positives, I'll say this. I think the casting for Dick Grayson is actually very good. This, Spot on. This guy looks like Dick Grayson. He just does. He, he, he has a, a real way of carrying himself. Yes. I, I will applaud that. Um, yeah. And it's funny because... I, I think the only real problem I have with Dick... I mean, I think it's weird that he's a detective, but if that's what we're doing in this show, that's what we're doing, whatever, I'll, I'll roll with it. My only real problem is how much of a goddamn psychopath they make him look when he actually starts fighting people. Because he starts snapping... Like, like his whole thing is like, oh, I was becoming too much like Batman. But he is, like... He, he is, like, obsessively violent to the point where he is scary. Like, and not in, like, a good Batman scary way where you're like, oh, he's scary to the criminals. No, no, no. He is a psychopath. Yeah, no. I, I will say, I like everything with Dick Grayson. But I hate everything with Robin. Okay, sh- sure. Sure. Um, because I actually kind of I like the stuff in the police station when they're they're just, they're reacting to him being in the city. They're like, oh wait, all oh, these mask guys. Why is he here? Why is he not in Gotham? Like he brings all these wacky criminals with him. Like, no, we don't want this. Like, I, I was I was like, okay. I, I like this. I, I did think this was where are we? Detroit was it? Detroit, yeah. Yeah. Where, where not Bloodhaven? Um, I I can't I can't answer you that. I don't know. To be fair, Teen Titans as a thing has never been. It's usually either been New York or uh, San Francisco, right? No, no, I agree with that. But it just felt weird for like other characters are scattered around. You know, Starfire's off somewhere in Austria. Europe. Austria, there we go. Oh, I'd have got there, maybe. Um, <laughs> no, you wouldn't. <laughs> no, I definitely wouldn't. But I knew, I knew she was somewhere over that way, and then. <laughs> It would have been fine. Over if, 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 Rome, Rome and Austria are pretty way, different I places. In Europe, it was close enough. If I you said Germany, I'd have let you away with over that way. I got you a continent. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Got the... <laughs> I think I think I'm showing just how drunk I was when I'm like, yeah, the content's good enough that I remembered that. Right. So so Dick Race is pretty good. I I like actually getting references to the flying races. I like getting references to just just the way one of the cops casually makes a reference to the Joker in a way. It just it felt different. Especially this is this is the sad thing about this is that the only representation in live action we've had of Dick Grayson was Batman Forever and uh, Batman and Robin. We have never that, actually that had. Apparently untrue. Is it? Where else we had one? Uh, with uh, the the uh, the sixty six show. A proper representation of live <laughs> action Dick Grayson. All right. That's still the best live action Dick Grayson. 
and that's a sad state of affairs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about a Dick Grayson who could become Nightwing, a Dick Grayson that can lead a Teen Titans, a Dick Grayson that the Dick that we love, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, I'll let you have this. Right. Even the comics aren't giving us that Dick right now. We are Dick deprived right now. We really are. Wait a minute, you asshole. You made a pact with me to hate read Nightwing 51. Now you're going to be not on this week's comics podcast episode. Oh, you dirty Is that bastard. This week? That's this week, yeah. It double oh, ships. Really... Oh, fuck, it does. Oh, I forgot about that. Luckily, Matt said he's going to hate-read it as well, so I'm not in the... Up... I'll hate-read it anyway. I just I'm not up shit creek, but that. still. I'll, um... You I, did I, me I, dirty. I'm sorry, but I, I did not realise. You did me dirty, that's all I'm saying. Anyway, so... No, I haven't I... read it yet, anyway. I've not. <laughs> that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't change the fact you did me dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Dick, so Dick Grayson, I think, is pretty good. Robin, uh, he's excessively violent, and I don't mind. Like, see when he was beating up the bad guys, right? Because he, he's tracking this child abuser, and it's like, okay, so we hate the villains, it's fine. Um, and the whole F Batman thing is is just juvenile writing. It's just whatever. But the actual fighting, the problem I have with it is that it doesn't feel like tactical. And like, you know, usually when Batman's fighting people or Robin's fighting people. It feels like yeah, it's 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 very harsh, but it's harsh in a very tactical way. It's enough to put them down, and it's very knowledgeable of the force. Whereas there's a point at the end of this where he is dragging a dude's face across broken glass and then kicking him while he's down aggressively it multiple feels times. Really sadistic. It feels sadistic. It feels unhinged, in a really unhealthy way. And my only hope here at this point is that it does feel that combined with that I was becoming too much like Batman, and that Batman's this violent asshole, my hope is here, at least the arc is, is that he's going to want to become better than this and get over it. Now, admittedly, the fact that Starfire is grinning and that she's burning people alive does not fill me with much hope to, you know, to correlate the two together when they become a team. And, but and still... this is my problem. If this wasn't a team, or, or I shouldn't say team, if this wasn't a Titan show... Mm-hmm. I mean, Raven's a teen. Th- we got one teen in the Titans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm Beast Boy's relatively young, right? He's younger. I don't know if he's as young as uh, Raven. I don't think he's as young as Raven, but he's he's definitely younger than yeah. than Starfire. You've him till last. He's only got one scene at the end. We'll get to him. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't think I'd hate this. I, I don't think I'd be like, oh, it's it's fantastic. I'd be questioning some of the choices, especially some of the stuff with Raven and Starfire. Still, mm-hmm. bit uh, cliche and tropey. But it's not awful. I think Raven... It's funny, they, they both have like problems in different ways. Raven's stuff doesn't outright kind of shit in what you think of Raven quite as badly as Starfire's does. But it's even more tropey and is full of bad acting and is full of all these other elements. And yeah. poor, poor Audrey from Twin Peaks is you know around for a couple of scenes and we have to say goodbye to her. I was like, no, Ra- I'll bring her back. Raven got my first, oh, I'm drinking for that moment. Which it one was, was it? Uh, it was when she pulled up her hoodie, and it had the beak on. Of course it does. She's not going to get and a costume. Like, She's just going to have no, the beak on her hoodie. I know, and I was like, "Oh, I'm drinking for that." <laughs> um, I'll tell you another moment I liked. I, as much as it was kind of a, a follow-on from the violent stuff, I did kind of like the bizarre scene of Dick washing his his like throwing stars, like he's he's, you know, he's throwing R's, I should say. Yeah, there he hasn't was, got wingdings yet. There was something really um, just mundanely normal about just him having to wash them after he's used <laughs> them. <laughs> got to reuse them, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, not, he's not got Bristol like, bankroll them constantly anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah, he can't afford all those on a detective salary, apparently. No, he's got a new partner as well who he's not trusting. He doesn't want a partner because he's... This, this is the side where, again, like I don't hate this. There's nothing... like It's not awful, but... Mm. It's okay, it's a TV show, right? It's This is the cliche stuff where, all right, yeah, I get what you're doing. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Also, I do, I do hate how it looks. They're going for that dark Zack Snyder visual style. Yeah, there's a couple of points where I thought the direction was solid. Just in general, like, every so often I'd be like, oh, there's some good direction here. It's kind of ruined by the filter and the, the just the, yeah. the color. But the direction itself isn't bad. Yeah, Raven has a vision of, you know, Dick Grayson's origin, and she mm, she ends up, I was you know, too keen on that. Nah, I wasn't feeling it either. And then uh, there's a, a one of the worst edited sequences I thought was when her mum got shot, 
I felt like it cut away from it really quickly. It was really bizarre. But it, yeah, it felt especially weird given how willingly violent and gory. Well, that was the thing. Was. It didn't feel like it was hiding the violence. It just felt like a really weird edit. Yeah, but it felt like it was trying to hide it. You know, it's like, oh, we don't want to stay on that too long. Let's get oh, out sure, of sure, but it, it was after the actual, like, blast through the head. You still it seen was, it, yeah. you know? It was... You do, yeah. But, you know, the, the guy who was chasing was a bit of a bad actor. He's dead by the end of the episode, though, so it's not we have to put up with him for any no, length of time. But, um... And she's, she gets... She, she intentionally throws a brick at a cop car because she's... Her, her soul self is, like, warning her she's in danger. Mm. And her way to get out of it is just to, like, you know, get arrested quickly. And it's when Dick comes in to speak to her, which you know, you know, destiny, whatever, because she she she's been dreaming to, about him. Yeah, uh, <laughs> she's been Raven's been dreaming about Dick, haven't we all? <laughs> um, and you know, he he he's like weirded out that she she knows things about his past, but he kind of just goes with it. But then the corrupt cop kidnaps, so and he has to go and try and help save her. Uh, although he ends up not being needed, Raven actually kills the guy. <laughs> herself it, here's the funny thing actually at one point is when dick's gonna try and help her he's, he's not robin here he's, he's dick racing detective and he pulls out his gun and i was actually thinking about this as he pulled out the gun i was like this doesn't bother me it's weird that they made him a detective but it doesn't bother me that he's just using a gun like this when he's a detective because he's been I, a cop before hasn't he in the comics i've not read him being a cop i'm sure it's happened at some point but i feel like when he's uh, well when he was in bloodhaven before I'm sure, there was a cop in Bloodhaven at one point. Maybe it was. Maybe it was later on the run than I read because I've I've read the first like thirty, yeah. forty Dixon issues, maybe something like that. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm misremembering. For some reason, I thought he was, and and I think he did have a gun there because yeah. that's but part the point, of the job, isn't it? Yeah, but the point I'm making is it's it's not like Batman's very anti guns, and then by relation, so is Robin. But the the thing is, is that the idea that vigilantes shouldn't have guns and and so on. They don't have a problem with like Gordon carrying a gun because he's a police officer. He's, he's an appointed officer of the law who who yeah. carries said gun. So it, it was it was it was like a sort of moment of self reflection as I was thinking about. It. Does this annoy me? He's got a gun. I was like, no, it doesn't annoy me because he's a police officer right now, uh, doing this this way. Um, you know, regardless of your thoughts on well, or not police officers should be carrying guns because I mean that's a whole other debate. Which yeah, yeah, but you know whatever. The, the, but... the point is, he is allowed. He should be carrying one, as far as you know, the the police in the show is concerned. Yes, um, and I was like, okay, that's fine, whatever. Hmm. Um, and yeah, so Raven goes all all spooky, possessed, <laughs> and and kills the dude. Uh, as, yep, as you do. Um. Sure, and she she needs help, and Dick's going to help her, and that, that's you know that's two of them connected. Meanwhile, Starfire's got amnesia, and this is this is the weird thing. This almost annoys me more than anything else about Starfire is that her starting plot is that she has amnesia and doesn't know who yeah. she is. I hate it. I, you know, we we talk about TV tropes that it's yeah. just uh, it's just these things that we just hate. This is one of them. Character amnesia. It's just it's nine times out of ten. It's yeah. just pointless. Joe, the fact is, is that I feel like. This is a, bit a strict case of if this wasn't supposed to be Starfire, if this was just like a character, right, in a TV show, and this was the start of the story, it's very Jason Bourne, right? She, she's, in, you know, mixed in with all these, like, you know, uh, Russian mafia, not Russian, sorry, uh, Austrian mafia, and whatever, and, you know, she's got people chasing her with guns, she seems to be rich, she has the, the penthouse suite, she's, you know, she, she's... She has the penthouse floor. Yeah. She's she's got all the the different passports. So it's like, oh, yeah, this is very boring. That's what I was thinking as I was, except for mm. the fact that she then starts glowing orange and burning people alive. Obviously, very different from Born. And I was thinking, yeah, if this was like a, an original thing, and I didn't know who this was, I'd be like, okay, this is somewhat interesting. The problem is, is this is meant to be Starfire, and I'm like, why is she dressed this way? What what why are we doing an amnesia plot, and why is she relishing? <laughs> And the murder of people. Now I know that Starfire in the comics, right? People are going to like point this out to me. I'm I'm well aware that one of the early plots with her and the Teen Titans was that she was a bit more willing to do things like kill people, and she had to be like talked down by Dick and so on. And maybe they're going to go down that path, and that's cool. But it's kind of weird how she's already been enjoying it, right? By the time we get there. Yeah, I think it's the enjoyment that bothers me. Like. Her killing people, I can accept. Especially Starfire has a habit of not understanding, right? Yeah. Uh, and not realizing what, what what's necessarily right and wrong, good and bad. But Just normal or not. 
But and relishing in it, getting enjoyment out of doing it. Yeah, it's the smile. It's her going, oh, it's the, oh, I can do this now. Oh, I'm a badass. Look at me. I'm, that, I'm a yeah. smug prick. That, 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 that's, that's, that, that's the thing. And it just, it feels kind of weird. It feels out of place and makes it hard to like her as a character at this point. Um, and th- I mean, that's ultimately the biggest problem with the show is it's going for this dark, gritty, gritty to, to the point of ridiculousness. And I, I don't mean it been a bit dark. I don't mean it been a bit gritty, but it's it's, it's, it's a bit, bit try hard with the edginess, right? It's like desperate to be edgy. It is. I think Dick's likable enough. He's pretty genuine when he's not Robin. Yes. Raven is supposed to be likable, but it's very just TV writing. That yeah. Nick, it's that TV teenager where I kind of just tune it out and don't care. Yeah, it was a thing where like, within like two minutes of her of meeting her, well, not two minutes because she had the whole scene with her mum, but when she's on the bus and like this kid starts to bully her and then this other kid sticks up for her and we get this fight in the school bus and then it, just, it, yeah. it felt like very tropey and then she tries to thank the guy who stuck up for her because at first I thought she felt awkward about it, but then she tried to thank her. I thought, oh, she actually, you know, she's, she appreciates what he did and he just kind of ignores her because, oh, I just got him into trouble. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, I get what it's supposed to be, but I don't like it. But... Starfire, I don't understand what, in any way how she's supposed to be likable. No, I don't get it yet either. It, it, it's it's rough. I don't... Yeah. And I think that that's that's why I hate it. Where if I hate it because it frustrates me and it annoys me that, that it's just wrong. Do, do, do you know what I'll say, though? Because, I can, because of where I can see Dick's story going... In fact, even this idea that he doesn't like being Robin, I can see that leading to him being Nightwing. Well, I can see that being the, the journey he goes on where he... He wants to do something like this, but he wants to be his own thing and not be Robin. And I can see that being how we how we get to a Nightwing suit, which is which is cool. It's fine. Um, but because the potential of that arc, because you know Raven's thing could get more interesting if we actually get to some Trigon stuff. I mean, that's just the the standard for her. Which I assume she seems like she's going to be the focal point of the season in terms yeah. of uh, the the core. And I don't know if we'll actually get to Trigon or if it'll kind of tease that it's like okay that's that's what we're going into with season two right that trigon's the big if part. she's if she's the main thing in season one i'd hope it does trigon by the end or at the very least if it's like no that's she's the main thing and then trigon's because the th- i'd feel like it's her thing again in season two if then trigon's the season two big bad unless trigon appears and is a separate entity in season two completely yeah do you know i think is is, kind of, is is right now this show is so ground. Even though we, Starfire is burning people up, <laughs> yeah. we, we we've got Raven and a Soul Cell, you know, and we got we, we got Beast Boy. It still feels it's trying to be so grounded and gritty, right? It's trying in its tone and its feel. How the hell do you do Trigon in that? With lots of edge. <laughs> 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 So, uh, but what I was going to get to is I don't think this is unsalvageable. No, no that's fair. Like, I, I could see this being good by the end of the season. I could see season two being better or, you know, whatever. I don't know what the progression is going to be like. And I'm not saying that it's definitely going to do this, but I can see potential in there I, for certain I, characters. I, I think I'm going to hate most of this season because of, you know, what, that's the, the pace of the arc is going to, what it's going to mm. be. I think maybe, for, not, maybe not season two. I think for Starfire, I think what they have to do is when she remembers who she is, she has to be horrified of who she's become. Yeah. <laughs> she has but, to hear it. And I, I don't want that her fi- remembering who she is being super late in the season. It might be. I feel like we're going to hear her plot, especially if she stays separate for a, a long time. Like if, she, yeah. if she doesn't even meet the other characters for like five episodes... She's going to be a tedious part of the next little bit. I, I I'm trying. I can't remember what all the episode titles were or when you know because they they give us some clue as to stuff. Like we've got no hawk and dove here yet. Well, the next episode's called Hawk and Dove, so I'm pre- I'm, I'm fairly certain <laughs> that that's going to be the I, next I one. I can see them being on the Starfire plot side of things. Uh, yeah, maybe potentially just to give her something to interact with. Yeah, because right now it's a lot of generic Austrian dudes. You know, these gangsters. I appreciated the subtitling. 
Oh yeah, they spoke in the you know in German and as did Starfire at one point actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, credit where it's due for that, I suppose. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and then the final scene, of course, is uh, there's a security guard playing a, a PS4 game, and there's a green tiger <laughs> in the, in the store. Who, who apparently only did this to steal a couple of Xbox games. That's literally what he does. The tiger grabs a couple of Xbox games and runs out into the woods and transforms it to Beast Boy. And is and what what I did note here is that it took a while to transform. It was very um, werewolf movie. Yes. The way he turned yeah, back. That's what I was going to say. Um, it was very American werewolf in London uh, in reverse, uh, which is cool. That's a fine way to do it. And I, I, you know, what? I'll give them some props as much as it didn't look like perfect Good. and i don't even know what you could say is perfect when you're talking about a green tiger but it looked better than i thought it was going to yeah i think the problem is the show's so dark right the color everything mm. that this slight bit of okay it has to be color right and it has to look kind of goofy by its nature yeah this is the weird thing is that when i'm reading a comic with the titans or, or even just with beast boy on it right and he turns into an animal I don't think the anime turns into is supposed to be photo real. I almost think of him turning into like a almost like a Green Lantern construct, but more solid, right? Sure. You know, it's not like he turns into a thing that actually has uh, all the properties of the animal. He's he's the shape of the animal essentially, with the strength of the animal, but he's not, you know, photo real. It's not like he's tricking someone to think that's a real elephant. He looks like a big green elephant. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Um, I I will say. Beast Boy still in Xbox games? Yeah, okay. That I can kind of see Beast Boy in that. Yeah, it wasn't really a critique of the character uh, in terms of accuracy or anything like that. It was just more just, oh, that's that's his introduction scene. <laughs> that's what yeah. he's doing. He's just stealing games. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, as as a hook to make me care about what he's doing, I guess is what I'm saying. That I don't I don't think you're supposed to care about what he's doing. You're supposed to go, hey, that dude's a tiger and now he's a kid. Yeah, but I mean, I knew that because he's Beast Boy. No, uh, yeah, we we know that. It's on the DC Universe. <laughs> Everyone knows that watching this. See, that's the thing. I think uh, I, I, I've not really been following their marketing and who where it's targeted. Are they targeting people who aren't necessarily huge DC? Like, hey, here's a new show. Come and check it out. Or are they mm. going, no, just the DC guy. Like you know, everyone who watches this, everyone is going to know who Beast Boy is going in. It does make me wonder, though, like, how many other animals have they got planned for them for the season? How often are they going to get this? Yeah, I don't know. Probably less than we'd like. <laughs> uh, it'll be like Firestorm on Legends. They remember that Firestorm can be a thing every, like, five episodes, maybe. <laughs> yeah, three times a season. Yeah. Uh, but hey, so uh, that's Titans. I, it was not good. There was yeah. there was glimmers of hope, but I th- I think I'm gonna stay drunk for now. <laughs> it's gonna remain a drunk show. Okay. Yes. Uh, We're gonna keep covering it though. I feel honestly, I'm too interested in it, despite the fact that it's not that good to 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 stop so, watching no, it. So the problem is- <laughs> If we weren't doing this podcast, if it was just mm. you know, the weekly reviews like we used to do with CW shows, I'd think about it. Because I'm like, okay, we've got a busy schedule. Do we want to fit this in every week? Do I want to get drunk for this every week? Luckily, I'm already getting drunk for hours. So it doesn't really, it's really matter too much. I'll just double, double them up. But I might not be going, yeah, go on then. But mm. now we're doing this show. I'm like, well, it's a new show. We probably should. And yeah. I feel like we're going to feel that way about most of the DC Universe shows, if not all of them. Yeah, I feel like, at the very least, the live-action one that's always on is probably going to be constant. Yeah, we're definitely going to do Young Justice. Harley Quinn, maybe. Because that could end up just being a comedy skit thing. Yeah, which is hard to talk about. That's why, that's why we don't review com- sitcoms, because there's nothing to really say outside of, I, I, oh, that joke was good and that joke was good. <laughs> I can very much see that show just being a sitcom and and that's fine I'll, I'll be into that but it'll be not much for us to talk to talk about weekly yeah. whereas young justice we know what we're getting so that's different but it, you know with this podcast there's a bit of an obligation almost like i feel like if gotham started now 
yeah, we'd be doing it. But because it's already in like this final season, because we didn't keep up with it, there's no point in trying to catch up. Exactly. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I guess we're locked in is what we're saying. Which, I guess, means we're also kind of locked into to Pennyworth. <laughs> which may be good. Who knows? That could be good. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's not like we've seen anything from it. I'm just sceptical, is all. I'm sceptical. The, the only way I might, I might manage to talk myself out of that one be by going, well, you know, it says it's a DC show, but it's nothing to do with any of it. <laughs> no, I mean, sure. Alfred Pennyworth and Thomas Wayne. They'll do that thing that all those prequels do, where somehow every Batman villain will pop up somehow, some way. <laughs> Yeah. Moving on, we're only 50 minutes into the show. Uh, we'll move on to the second show of the week, which was the season premiere of Supergirl, which is season four, episode one. Man, season four already. It's, it's, it flies in. Uh, it does. So, season four, episode one, it's called American Alien, which is a pretty good title, I have to admit. Um, and, yeah, where, where do we begin? Where do we begin with this? We, we got a montage of her like, saving a bunch of people around the world. Yeah, you know, doing Superman's off on Argo, so she's uh, filling in, yeah. filling in, yeah, around the, around the planet, which is there's a nice touch. I'm I'm cool with that. She's saving yeah. some trains and 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 whatnot, doing, doing various things, Save, saving animals out of trees and <laughs> you know, the usual, yeah, usual stuff. And I'll, I'll say what I liked about this first of all. I like that because they're dealing like a, they're dealing another big social topic, right? But I like that they're baking it into the overall plot of the season. Because we're, we're they've set up in this one that no no we're going to be talking about aliens as, as an allegory for racism and immigration and we're going to bake that into what the, the whole thing is um, doing. A little less hammy than the show usually is because of that because it doesn't feel like oh we're doing an episode. Yeah exactly it feels like it's going to be an ongoing thing and that's not to say that all the elements are perfect. Um, I I thought it was strange how we get introduced to the doctor alien dude and in the very next scene it cuts to him being attacked so it just that felt a bit clunky. And then the biggest problem I had with this, so that we could have like Supergirl shock realization of, of the of the, the 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 dark side of this later, is that it almost felt like they had to write her intentionally a little bit ignorant, so that the the shock of the the truth would hit her I would, later. I would say beyond ignorant. Sure, because like, it's will, in, willfully just not caring. She essentially, how do I put this? She essentially has or doesn't realize that she has. Passing for human privilege is how I'd phrase it. Yes. Right? Because the other aliens, obviously Jean gets to pass for human as well, but the rest of them, you know, some of them have tusks, some of them have ears, some of them have, you know, pointy ears and so on. And they're like, oh, we can't just pass for human like you do. And she says, no, things are fine. No one's, ma- you know, mean to me. Like, everything's fine. Like, the world's better than it, what it was when we started. And that's true. It is. I mean, the world has improved potentially since the show started just like in real life it feels like yeah if you compare the world to 200 years ago yeah we've moved along quite a bit since yeah then. she's like look you know we've got legislation that means they're treated as citizens and that's true that is technically better that is yes no it's technically better but as she's, John says it's you know there, there are negatives that come with it yeah but she's ignoring all of the actual ongoing things that still happen and the fact that there's hate groups the fact that there's all these things it, it makes her a bit of a frustrating character. It makes her a frustrating character in this scene. But I do like the moment when she finds the computers, because it's obviously Mercy and Otis Graves, right? Who who are the villains in this episode. Uh, Mercy, played by Rona Mitra, who uh, is an actress I, I've seen in a bunch of things. She she was in the uh, in Hollow Man. She was in Doomsday, which is a movie that uh, came out about, probably about 10 years ago now. Um, she's been a bunch of things. She she replaced Kate Beckinsale in Underworld movies eventually. I think she 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 was like the the, the okay get is a slightly less well known British actress to to play to play the Underworld. Lead. Someone else we can throw in tight. Yes. Uh, uh, so now she's here playing Mercy, and I, I, it's what's funny about Otis is I, I can't hear Otis and not think of uh, the movie Otis. You know the the fat bl- bumbling idiot Otis. Yeah. Um, but hey, whatever. Uh, and they are essentially fun, you know, not not funding, but they are they are essentially being like, how, how, what's what's the correct phrase here? They they are offering a service to hate groups against aliens and giving them like like how, ideas how to build weapons, uh, tactics they could use, facilitating their their cause. Yeah, it's um, oh, what the correct term? Be? I'm sure there is a word for this. I'm sure there is as well. Uh, I, I mean, I assume they believe all this as well. I'm sure they believe in the cause. 
Uh, I'm not sure if it's just like a cold, like, oh, they're doing this purely for the profit. They don't actually care. Um, yeah, I'm sure that helps. Yeah. But, you know, Supergirl sees these chat rooms and it's like normal people like on these chat rooms like saying, hey, we want to, how do we hurt these types of aliens? How do we do this? And these are these are hate crimes. Because the first time it comes up and Jean tries to say, hey, I think this was a hate crime. This is no coincidence. And she's like, no, nah, I mean, I think in this case, it's just happenstance. And the first time she says that, I'm like, okay, because they stole some technology. And I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of on her side in this scene because it, it, it does kind of look like, no, they wanted this tech. The fact that he's yeah. an alien is just happenstance. It's a byproduct. He's the one that had access to yeah. the room. But the second time when the, the, there's the bomb, and she agrees it's a hate crime, but then she gets into the debate about how bad things really are. And it's this scene where she gets terrified. And I like that she's terrified. I like that this is like a... This is a thing she can't just punch, right? This is something that Superman and Supergirl can't just beat uh, mm. in a straight one-on-one fight. This is something they have to inspire change about. Uh, the, the, the challenge of the superhero, if you will. And I like that we're tackling that. I think that's good. Like I say, some of it's clunky because they have to make her be ignorant to, to make the, 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 the... I don't even want to call it a twist, but the have her have her moment of like, yeah. oh shit, it's that bad. There's a there's a few things with Kara in this. They just feel like, really, you know, like, like you know, her being that ignorant, her having become cat with the coffee. Okay, so here's the thing. I like this in concept. My problem. I like it as a comedy yeah. skit. My prob my problem with this with her kind of becoming cat and like Jimmy pointing out. So we have this new character Nia who comes in, and she's this you know very nervous intern, and she's just got the new job and or not intern. You know what I mean? She's she's newbie and. Yeah she's got the coffee and she's like oh i'm sorry maybe cold now and she's acting very like cara and i was like, okay i get the joke here that's fine and but the way cara reacts of course is nothing like cat she doesn't care she's like it's fine calm down it's fine yeah but i, I will say like when, when mia said oh you know I, I know you have it at this specific temperature i'm like what since when yeah when, when did this all start so i don't think she does i think she she's read into that because she's got information from someone but Here's my, here's my thing though, right? So the joke is, is that she's given some advice to Nia and she she says like, uh, it's not chop chop because Jimmy says you almost said chop chop. TikTok. TikTok, that's it. She's sort of like, TikTok. And she's like, claps her hands. It's like, you're basically becoming cat. And it's like, no, I'm not. Shut up. And I'm like, okay, we're in season four. We can make these jokes now. Here's my problem with this though. And the, the problem I have with Nia, like really being like in awe of her and be like, oh my God, you're this big shot at this company. I'm like, we have seen nothing at her job in the last like year. <laughs> uh, do you know what? The last thing I really remember of of her properly at the job was not last season. It was Snapper Car. He was still around. It it was Snapper yeah. Car. It was her just getting a job as a journalist, right? She basically because she was just a yeah, the office assistant right before. She was Cat's assistant. Yeah, yeah. In season one. And then, you know, she was like, no, no, I want to be a journalist. I want to do that. Season two was her learning how to be a journalist. Season three, she didn't work there. I mean, no, it was brought up a couple of times. It was once or twice where her being a journalist helped investigate something. Only when it was relevant for the plot, though. But not... This is the thing. She was a ju- junior journalist at best, still. Why Why is someone in awe of her? I don't get it. They've not earned it. They've not earned the fact that every that this newbie thinks of her this way. It's weird. It's just weird. And I get that. Okay, she's friends with the boss. He's probably promoted her way past their what she should be at because. Yes, that's called nepotism. Sure. Um, no, I'm going to call it a, a an allowance because he knows that she's secretly busy most of the time saving the world, and that gets her a few. Few yeah, shortcuts. It, it, it gets her a few shortcuts, and it, 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 you, you, you let it slide. But what you don't do is obviously promote your friend who's doing very little work compared to the hardworking colleagues, and go, "Oh, she goes to the top." You let her slide. Okay, she didn't meet a deadline. Let's not let's not penalize her. Right. Yeah, but here's the thing: not only is the CEO uh, a friend, the owner is also a friend. <laughs> <This is> so <laughs> bad. So, so she's got she's got it locked in at every level of upper management. <laughs> she's getting to do whatever the hell she wants. <laughs> but that was the thing. Basically, when she picked journalism, she basically said, "Hey, I want to do journalism," and then she started doing journalism. And Cat she, went, "All right then." She could literally come in the next day to Jimmy and 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 uh, Lena and say, "Hey, I want to do uh, on-air TV broadcasting for Catco now," and they'd be like, "Yeah, sure." 
and, <laughs> go and for that's it. That's why season two for the for the the Catco stuff was far and away the best because she went in going, "Hey, I'm a journalist now," and then you had Snapper go, "Are you not?" Yeah, that's what he was just, good about that. Just asked your job, yeah, he, he, and then they gave it you. You don't earn it. You he you called her out on it, and that's what made that work. Right, that's what made that work. Exactly, and, he... and the arc for the season in that stuff was her learning how to actually do it for real and earning her position. Yeah, and then we did nothing with it since. Yes, yes. Uh, so who's to know, who's to say how how relevant it'll be this season? Given that we've got a new employee that looks up to Kara, I'd say it's going to be around for a bit. At if least nothing first. Else. At least till Christmas. Yeah. So we'll see until we, you know, Nia discovers she's a superhero as well, and Raid Baguette that sort of stuff and i am kind of waiting just to see who she actually is and i don't know if that's oh we know that right i, mean, I can't remember yeah, it off the top of my head you know, but we know but, that like, i'm waiting to see like how long it is till it's just like okay who is she you know oh, okay right until there's a mystery and it's revealed and yeah like yeah, okay. and then and then we can obviously just abandon catco again <laughs> you know maybe we won't maybe we could be optimistic and say no I'll tell you what I like. I like uh, I like Brainy being a permanent fixture at at the DEO and he's, upsetting he's Alex, as 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 is established in the episode. Yes, he actually addresses the win at one point because he thinks that will make Alex happy. Alex is pissed at him because he flies off and Supergirl needs help the first time she fights Mercy in that because she gets these like you know dampener cuffs on her. Uh, just like, okay, tactical teams, move, move, move. And she's, she's getting moving, and Bray's like, oh, no time for the president. Long live the Legion. And he just flies out of the building. <laughs> and she just looks pissed that he's sped off without <laughs> <laughs> I like her new haircut, by the way. It's working for her. Not well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Start mentioning it. Jean's got a new haircut as well. He's got the, the little, uh, I don't yeah. know what you call them, but the little... I don't know. Little bits. Yeah. <laughs> it looks it looks fun to touch. I I think that'd be like a soothing thing to rub your hand over. I feel like people would hate that. They probably no, they probably would. Um, it's the same time anytime you get like a sort of buzz cut. There's always people who are like, oh, I want to feel the buzz cut because it's you know the soft brush of the. No, I get that hair. sometimes when I go out. People yeah. are like, oh, your hair looks really springy. Yeah, it's, yeah. But it's a bit longer than this, and and they're like, oh, can we can we touch it? Yeah. No, no, that, that's a thing I've had. I'm, I'm in strangers. The I touch your hair. Yeah, no, strangers have called me. Can I, can I touch your hair? I don't know what it feels like. I've never had strangers do it. I've, I've had people who know me do it and say, oh, hey, I've had it. strangers in a bar do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your hair's so ginger and mysterious. Can I touch it? Yeah, especially when it's a, when it's a bit longer and it's a bit bigger and it's like proper, like puffy looking almost. Right, You're like, okay. oh, I want to know what it feels like. <laughs> it's a thing. That's just. Yeah, I know. Anyway, uh, so no, no, Bra- Brainy stuff's working for me. Them having to work together is cool. Uh, Alex uh, still still rocking some cool little gadgets. Yeah, she's got her magnet gun or her magnet gloves, I should say. Still, yeah, and the little force field thing for the bomb to contain the explosion. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that was nice. That was nice. Obviously, the plot with the president, of course, is that they expose that she's an alien because they save her from the assassination, but she actually took a bit, and it's revealed that she's an alien. So now everyone knows that there's an alien in office. Yep. And we're going to deal with that, which is probably how we get the the, the vice president because we know they we cast him, yes, for the season. So, yeah. uh, that's the thing. We also get Agent Liberty shows up at the end. They've kidnapped Jean's alien support group friend. She's uh, yes. she's there. The, the English woman. Yes, well, she's an alien first, but yes, she 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 spent time in England, hence the accent. I love how they put yeah. that in to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I spent time in England. All right, yeah. it's fine. Whatever. I wasn't questioning it. It's whatever. You're an alien. Have whatever accent you want. I don't care. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, and obviously at the end, of course, we find out the train at the start was caused by Russian Supergirl uh, practicing punching stuff in underground because she's been trained. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I- I'm actually excited for the Russian Supergirl stuff because, I- honestly, more more uh, Benoit's playing different versions of Car is always kind of fun to be honest. Um, it is. I'm into it, it. Like overall, I'm pretty positive in the episode, and yeah, y- we'll talk about Lena and Jimmy stuff in a second. And uh, what's her face? Lillian. I have to think about it. I was like, <laughs> sorry, I wasn't sure. I was like, begins with like, goddamn L because they all begin with L. <laughs> but <laughs> which, what yeah. is it? But. So and now we know we're getting Lex. Of course, we're going to meet Lex at some point. Yeah, but. I will say I'm not I'm not as positive as I wanted to be. 
Okay. It it feels kind of very by the numbers. Very just okay. It's an episode. It feels on par. Um, Sam and Alex are gone. They did, oh, not Alex. Sorry, Sam and Ruby. Well, Alex is around. Don't worry. Alex is around. <laughs> <laughs> So, I really had to think yeah. about what you were on about. Yeah, Sam, Sam and Ruby are gone. They have like some offhand comment about them just moving somewhere yeah, and playing sports or, or new school or something like that. Um, and I said, like, okay, fine. We might see them again, but probably not. Uh, maybe no, a cameo. No, no more machine gun for, for Ruby. I know. Ruby, Ruby was grown on me by the end of last season. <laughs> of all the kid actors for the for the CW versus the Oh, Wars. we'll get to Arrow. Ar- Ar- Arrow's next, actually. Arrow's a Monday now. That's next. Oh, well, that's interesting. I know, I know. I wasn't even the end of the show anymore, but yeah, I mean, I mean, like, I'm fairly positive on the on the the premiere overall. It's got some clunkiness that Supergirl sometimes has, but I like that it's baking its social issue that it wants to cover into the main ongoing plot. So it's not just like a one and done. It's going to be something. That's... Uh, yeah, I, I think my concern is, and and I felt it in this episode is, yeah, okay, it's not going to be okay. We we've got one episode to do list. Let's do it all now. Hmm. But I still don't know if it just has the tact to deal with it on the level that it should be for these topics. That's fair, but it has tackled some well in the past. It has done some better than others, but oh, I like in this episode. I I liked Kara's side, not the the ignorance of you know when she found out. Yeah, when when the horrors like, of like there's just there's people out there who are that's hateful. Yeah, I like that reaction. It because it, it kind of ties into just the idea that. Like a lot of people didn't realize how many white supremacists still existed until like the last sure. couple of years when stuff you know it was like okay there's actually this these horrors still exist we have to kind of accept that yeah. and yeah. try and deal with it. It's the the mercy side of stuff, you know, what following them and watching them do oh, and, sure. and, and and plotting all these hits almost. I mean, villains has never been Supergirl strong so ever. Yeah, it hasn't. No. Yeah, you know? but I feel like. This is the most we focused on a villain in the first episode. That's going to be a season-long villain, right? That this is the the plot. I don't know if Mercy and Otis are going to be there all season. I feel like they might be like a gateway to. Maybe maybe it won't be them specifically, but the, yeah. the concept that we're dealing with will be. Yeah. And I think we've never really dealt with that this heavily for the season opening. Because I feel like Russian Supergirl has to be a big factor. Yeah, I don't. That's that's what's going to interest me is is how this all comes together, because they're very different plots. I can see how they come together because Russian Supergirl, if she's all evil and she does things and sort of discredits real Supergirl, and sure, sure, you know, if the Russians manipulating things. <laughs> yeah, the Russians are now manipulating the superheroes. They're, they're really not trying to be subtle, are they? <laughs> but what, what's funny though is someone like noticed Red Sun lying in the coffee table and went, "Hey, we can do some with this." <laughs> influence and elections and superheroes we're doing, doing the whole shebang yeah yeah um, you know what i've come to kind of accept supergirl's clunkiness when it comes to dealing with us and for the most part i let it away with it the gun debate issue or the gun debate episode was it was really mm. clunky though even for this show standards um typically i think it does an okay job with the clunkiness around it but it has enough heart to make its point, and I feel like this episode kind of falls into that, where some of the moments that did hit, hit well enough that I'm like, you know what, okay, these have made their point, and I can kind of forgive oh, yeah. some of the other stuff. But I think, I think not so much of the problem this episode, but my worry for the season is that when it doesn't land, you know, when they, when they do these episodes, eh, it's just one episode, whatever. If this starts to go wrong and starts to be too much of, of that, that's the season kind of gone. Uh, yeah, it depends how much the season devotes it, to this. It, it, it does, yeah. Because it, cha- it changed very dramatically last year after the Christmas break. <laughs> it did, didn't it? So it may do that again. So it could just be like a, a first chunk thing. Yeah. Um, it, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to get worried about the season. Even if even if this plot does kind of go balls up. Do you know what? A lot of the main plots in Supergirl have done that in the past. And it's not really affected the enjoyment of the good parts of the show too much. Like... You know, Rain peaked before Christmas when she beat the show at Supergirl. That was a yeah. good episode. That was a great fight. Absolutely. And then Rain kind of went on too long, and then we got to that weird fight and stuff at the end of the season, and it was like, wait, what are we doing now? I, I will say, out of the, the three CW shows that we care about, mm-hmm. really, uh, that we've had so far, comparing just the first episodes... There's really four now. 
Well, yeah, yeah, but Legends hasn't started yet, and Arrow okay, we don't I see care about. I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you know, counting the two first episodes from from last week, and then this one, I think this is my least favorite by a considerable margin. I think Flash. You know, we we were really positive on that and how it kind of won us over. Yeah. Flash had a better Kate. premiere for sure. No, I, I don't dispute yeah. that. Black Lightning was what it always is. For, for, which you know, is solid. Yeah, which, which is, is good. solid. Yeah. And this, I feel like it's 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 there. It's better than where we were at the end of last season, where we were all over the place. Mm-hmm. But it's not won me back. You know, we came out of Flash and Supergirl last year relatively negative, right? Hmm. Flash more, so, but Flash came out and went, "No, we're making a statement. We're we're back on track." Supergirl hasn't won me over yet. It's pointing in the it's it's more in the right direction but it's not there for me yeah supergirl has always kind of been like this though where it'll kind of waver a bit and then it'll come back and it'll have a great episode because like we say flash last year was bad for a long time and had one standout episode where supergirl would do this thing where it'd have you know a mediocre one a pretty bad one but then a really good one then it'd be a kind of okay one then it'd be a good one then it'd be a bad one. you know it was kind of like you say all over the place yeah whereas flash was a bit more consistently kind of rough for a long time in, in the was. back half of the season yeah. Um, uh, Supergirl would definitely went out on a sour note though, because everything at the end felt rushed with the Argo City and all that nonsense. Yeah. But I, I, I think just on Supergirl alone, out of the you know the the four season premieres, this mm. is probably my least favorite of those. Sure, not counting Arrow. No. <laughs> just just double check. <laughs> no. Just double checking. Um, no, that's that's fair. That's fair. Um. All right. Well, I guess we'll. I guess we'll move on to 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 next. Two arrow. To to arrow. Yes, arrow. Which is I've not got it up yet. It's inmate four something something something. I, I want to say four one seven something, but I'm kind of just. I know. I know his prisoner card from the end of last year was the the the. It was the the date of of his creation, his first like appearance. Right. Or on his prisoner card, but I, I, I don't think his inmate number matches that. 4587, for the record. This is season 7, episode 1, so another premiere uh, to talk about. Exciting. <laughs> He's in prison. <laughs> Exciting for you. You had to watch it alone. <clears throat> Wait, why, why is that exciting just for me? It's just because I, 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 I was drunk, so it made no difference to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just want to remind anyone who skipped over that section at the start. You watch yeah. this sober on your own, willingly, sort of. So here's the here's the thing. So we we hate Ricardo Diaz with a passion. I I will go out in the limb and say he's the worst character in this show's history, and that is saying something. <laughs> that is a bold statement, right? And someone might find someone who who I hate more if they really dig. I don't know, but from the top of my head right now, he's the worst one. And we open this with a... It's a dream sequence, right? But it's him chasing Felicity and William. So we start with Felicity, who I don't like. William, who I can't stand, because he's an awful little oh, actor. Shit. yeah. Well, he's actually not a little anymore. We, we, we said this a lot last season. He, he grew about two foot. He he, he had a growth spurt, didn't he? Well, it's the same, actually, because he did that last season. This season, I think it's uh, uh, Renee's daughter has had a growth spurt, because she's in the boxing scenes in the gym, and I'm like, she's like a foot taller. Like, what happened? <laughs> That's what five months at this time uh, of your life does. Yeah, when, you, when you're about that 13, 14 age, yeah, you have that that yeah. spurt when you get to your adult height, more or less. Uh, and I'm like, damn, she's taller than Renee now. <laughs> Renee's a small man. <laughs> What's happening? Anyway, so, and then, then, you know, Diaz comes out of the, 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 the jungle with a gun. And I'm like, and oh, you just no, go, for it's, God's sake. It's him. Why did we bring him and, back? And I'm like, could it not have been Prometheus? <laughs> We could have had that glorious music right now. Why were we not having this last season after the the exploding islands? I am I am longing for Prometheus. I didn't like him, but I am longing for him compared I, to this dirt bag. No, no, I love the cheese of Prometheus. It's not good, but I love it. It, it just because of the kind of went, screw it. Let's do it. Bring back discount Jake Gyllenhaal, please. Yeah, bring him yeah. back. But anyway, so. He wakes up, he's in prison, we get a montage of him in prison, and I do, I, I will say this, I do like that several villains are in there, that you know, we knew from the show, you know, Cody Rhodes, the wrestler's in there, uh, Vinnie yep. Jones is in there, and uh, Michael Jai White, uh, you know, the original Spawn, is in there. Yes. So I was like, alright, oh, okay, you got Bronze Tiger, you got whatever Vinnie Jones played, <laughs> and whatever Cody Rhodes played, I don't remember the character it, names. It wasn't Brick, was he? 
I can't remember. It's been a while since this plot. That was yeah, it has season been a three. while. Yeah. I, 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 you know what, I'll give them credit. That's kind of, kind of impressive that two of them are actually quite old characters as well. You know, for the show. For the show, yeah. Because cause he, he was season three, because that's when they did like their, their knockoff No Man's Land was when Vinnie Jones was yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. It was it was just after the, the, the mid-season, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and I want to say Michael J. White was like season two, maybe even season one. He was early. He was early. So it's about, I like that. I like that they're in there. Oh, we seem to have retconned the fact that everyone from, from Star City goes to Iron Heights because <laughs> because now it's a different prison because we can't have Iron Heights both in the Flash and Arrow. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. But, so, so this, and then this this actor who I recognise from Freddy vs. Jason of all places uh, wants protection because the other guys are meaner and beating him up. And he has to, like, you know, oh, no, I need to keep my setting short, so I'm going to not interfere or get into any trouble in any way. So he has to turn a blind eye and let him get the, the shit beat out of him. And that's kind of the, the main plot inside. Kind of like that. Yeah. We also get a, a, a naked shower fight with Oliver. Which... I, I, I will say, actually, I thought some of the fight choreography was on pretty good form. Because when Arrow is on good form with its fight choreography, mm. there's some decent stuff in there. I think my problem with the the shower scene wasn't so much the choreography of it because it was fine, right? Yeah. It was this weird thing where they want to do this edgy, like you know, prison shower fight scene, but, but they're trying to, but they can't have to hide everything. But they have to hide everything because I was getting flashbacks of Eastern Promises, where there's a similar scene in that with Viggo Mortensen. But you know, the entire time he's naked and you see everything, you know. Yeah. So yeah. dude he, hangs down. So so he feels vulnerable because he's naked while he's been attacked, right? And this is what they're going for here. But it's just kind of like, all right, we have to hide it though. So, so there was always like the one little bit of wall, just at the right height, just to hide there it. There was, there was. I will say though, in in contrast to what you described there, I don't think all of us meant to feel vulnerable here. I think it's. I mean, I think it's meant. It's like it's the most vulnerable place to attack him, right? Yeah, but he never seems worried or concerned, right? He just just deals with it. Sure, but I mean it's it's harder though. He's, he's not not it. It's not harder, but the the fight is harder. Sure, right? He's, sure. he's and the whole thing is. But, I mean, but the point is, we can't see anything, so we don't know that it's not harder. Sure, he he could be getting off in the fact that he's beating people up. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me with his history. Exactly. He's like, oh, I'm punching people. Oh, oh, oh I've got this. me going. <laughs> uh, so so Felicity is in witness protection with William, and she's got she's got pink hair. And she's got a nose ring and like an eye, an eyebrow ring and, and all sorts. And she's working at a coffee shop. And I, I was shocked they didn't just use the jitter set. I was shocked. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm getting flashbacks to season one of, of Legends where it's, oh, I was a barista, you know. Because that, <laughs> that's all we got out of Hulk. <laughs> but, so, there's a subplot where the guys like kind of into, into her for some reason. And I'm, I'm not sure what the purpose of that little subplot is no me either because show she's still devoted because i thought he was going to pop back up again after she turned him down and it would be relevant in some way but it never became back and now she's coming back to the city so like i guess we're never seeing him again i think it was just to show that she yeah she's she's out here but she's she's still she's still in in into her husband I never doubted that, though. I never... No, I didn't either. <laughs> it kind of feels redundant. I think that's the point. I'm not saying it's good or effective or that it's necessary. And I'm she's living with stuff. William. And I, I I still laugh every time this comes up because she's been saddled with this kid that she has nothing to really do with. <laughs> so by the end of the episode, she's shipping him off to Bourne School un- under the guise of safety. <laughs> no, she just she's just like, ah, oh, finally, place to myself. So here's the thing. So, so Diaz does find her, right? And I thought it was weird how she kind of fights back. We've seen that he's actually very capable of fighting. And she fights back well enough to last for a while. And then it cuts away in a bit of a cliffhanger. I did think it was really weird how she just showed up at the prison and was like, oh yeah, Argus showed up at the right time. And I'm like, yeah, but did they get Diaz then? No, he got away? This feels like we should have seen this in yeah, some way. Why, why did they just show up at the right time? Will, William went and got him, maybe? Phone them, but... Were they that close that they could just come upstairs? Well, and if they were, would well, they not no, have seen Diaz? We already heard from Diggle that they, they were under twenty four seven surveillance, so so they had to be close yeah. by. Right, but if they're that close by, would they not have seen Diaz just stroll in into the locked door with her biometric scanner? 
yeah, I, I mean, I'm not even questioning that. Like, I'll, I'll buy that he's just that good that he found a way around that, but I just, it just it feels so weird to me not to show how that scene ended because it's like it's one thing when it's a really obvious mm-hmm. ending to a scene, but I'm like, yeah, but how did he get away then if they showed up? So you have to show him kind of running away or like you know you know making the choice to save his own ass yeah. instead of killing her or you know he something. He dived like that. off a bridge. <laughs> well, that was last season. <laughs> well, okay, fine. He dived out a window. What do you want me to say? So that's the whole thing. I mean, Laurel 2.0 is working as the DA, apparently, or assistant DA, or whatever she's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so, so the, the, the plot in the city, though, is there's a. So, so Felicity's coming back, just to, to round that off. Yes. She can't just sit by and do nothing. She's going to help try and fight and track down Diaz, even though. Everyone in Team Arrow has been outlawed from being a vigilante, or their, or their immunity goes out the window. So we find out that Dinah is actually a police captain now, because Lance is dead. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's fine, it's whatever. Um, it, it's kind of weird to me that there's no one who's been there longer who is older, <laughs> who is more suitable for the job. It's kind of weird, but... Yeah. How yeah. many police captains do you see who are who are in their early 30s? <laughs> You don't. I, I don't. Is she even in her early? Th- I'm assuming she's in her early thirties, given the general age of everyone. But I, I don't actually know. Does IMDb tell you it that? It does not have her date of birth or her age. I can't remember her name. I'm blanking. Doesn't matter. Whatever. But the point is, is police captains tend to look like they're at least in their their mid to late forties, and that's, a, that's I'd say that's a young police captain. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, it's, it's that sort of thing where you don't get there when you're young. It's the same as being a president. You don't, you, you don't get presidents who are under 40, right? Well, there's a minimum age for presidency, isn't there? Is there? I don't know. I wasn't aware I think, of that. No, I think there's a, you have to be a, a minimum age. Yeah, but the, the point being is you have to kind of climb through the, the, the political ranks a bit before you can, or be a celebrity. That's, that's a conversation for another time. Um, why are you screwing your eyes at that? I'm, I'm just, you know, just. The president right now I, is literally there because he was a celebrity first. I, I know. I've just, I just have rolled my eyes at the fact that it worked. <laughs> anyway, so, but regardless, she's police captain. Renee's doing like self defense classes for the kids, including his daughter, uh, and they've got crappy equipment. Um, I will admit, Renee so was fixes or- everything. Yeah, he was oddly the most relatable and likable character in this episode. I think he has been for a long time on the show. Because he, he like, so he's helping one of the kids in his class who want to get a gun because they don't think it's safe anymore because there's no vigilantes. And he tries to stop him and he, and, you know, but he's the guys who was going to sell a gun, you know, try and attack him and he fights back. And then this fake Green Arrow shows up. I say, well, I say fake, but, you know, some, someone in the Green Arrow outfit shows the up. Imposter, and... yes. Because we've never done this before, right? <laughs> um, know. Comes in and you know takes care of the bad guys, and uh, Renee has to put out a report and whatnot. And he kind of sticks up. He's like, "Hey, no, he saved my life. He's doing a good job, you know, Dana. Don't arrest him. Let him do his thing." And she's like, "Yeah, but you know, they may think it's related to us, and if it's related to us, then we lose our immunity. So we can't do that." And she also brings up a relatively good point of, "Well, I mean, did he save your life, or did he just stop the?" the- the, the, yeah. the exchange, you know, were you a byproduct? Yeah, we don't really know, right? Because the, 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 it's kind of equal. I'll give the show credit here. They're kind of equally 50 50, both taking a hunch. Because he could be just a dangerous guy who's using the Green Arrow persona and he has no, he doesn't care about saving anyone. And Rennie could be right that he does care about doing that and he is worth keeping around, just like Oliver, you know, in the show's logic was worth keeping around i'd argue yeah. that oliver was also a murdering psychopath and probably shouldn't have been kept around but that's and, and on that note yes just to, we'll, we'll talk about the the imposter while we're here yes yes he's got a list he does have a list he's got a list and he's checking it twice <laughs> what was the list public knowledge i don't remember it being a thing people knew about well if it's the obvious person that i think it probably is even though that seems far too obvious that it's not a random public person it's someone who wouldn't know he had a list i I agree it's roy right see this is the thing that's what i was thinking all episode until i got to the end and i thought well it's too obvious now it can't be roy right it's 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 that or it's just diggle again (laughs) (laughs) you you missed the action um i mean hell when even says that at one point i thought it was you at first (laughs) so 
like, so, like, I kind of respect that a little bit, and that I kind of respect that, you know, Whale Dog, who's not been actively Whale Dog and put on the hockey mask for a long, you know, for the, the five months or whatever, he shows up and he actually stops, he, he kind of saves the Green Arrow from being arrested, the imposter, uh, and Dane is pissed at him for it. Can we, but, can we just call this guy the Hood? Because he's, he's got the list. Okay, sure. But he, uh, what I liked about it, though, is that the next day at his gym, this is my favourite scene in the episode, he comes in and he's like, hey, we're going to get new punching bags, we're going to get new shoes for you, we're going to get all these new things. And his daughter looks like, and by the way, the daughter's a much better actress than William. I just want to point She's that out. She's so good. She's like, hey, I thought we, you know, all, all the all the broken stuff built characters. Like, I said that before I knew we were getting better stuff. <laughs> 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 That's a good line of dialogue. <laughs> the, the honesty of it. I, I, uh, uh. Good. Now, I'm all for Zoe becoming like, I don't know, the new Speedy or something. <laughs> like, train her. Get her up and coming. Yeah, yeah, we need a next generation, right? Yeah. How, how, how have Renee go out in a blaze of glory and have her put on the hockey mask? Put on the hockey mask. <laughs> uh, but she could use a machete instead of guns because do like a proper hockey mask wielding maniac. <laughs> Thank I you very much. all that with bloody grenades. <laughs> little maniac. Oh no, Zoe, Zoe, Zoe's grown on me. Zoe, Zoe, I mean, obviously it helps her that she's in the same show as William, who is annoying and awful and all these other yeah. things. Yeah. But she's actually, she surpassed Ruby, I think. I, th- I think she has a bit more charisma than Ruby did. And Ruby was okay for certain things, but... I think R- Ruby was good in the script and decent enough in acting to pull it off. Sure. I think... So is it, is it a bit more wit to her, and the charisma to pull that off. Yes, yes, probably more so in this episode because she's getting to do something different than just being. Oh, she's the the plot device for the I need my kid back plot. Yeah, but she but she's had that kind of humor. Yeah. For a while. Well, yeah, I think the first time we really liked her was when she just said, "All right, Dad, you're a vigilante. I know. I'm not stupid." <laughs> that, that was yeah, that yeah. scene. Yeah, <laughs> I can still hear you. Yeah, you know, when she called him out for it and just said, "Yeah, I get it, Dad. I know what you are." Just kicking <laughs> me. I really liked how um, <clears throat> blunt he was about it in this episode with the kids. It's like, but you, you, you were, you were out there, right? And he was like, I mean, "Technically, yeah, <laughs> but not anymore." So not no for a long guns. time. Yeah. Uh, so you know, so they're the MVPs of the episodes is uh, Red yeah. Dar. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I, just to go back to the prison stuff, I guess, because eventually Oliver does beat the shit out of everyone, and he's like, "Oh, you should have killed me to the big guy who threatened them." Who you know, because because Diaz sent the guy to say, "Hey, we've got your wife," but then they didn't have his wife. <laughs> no, and he was all delighted to see see Felicity. Um. Did that for up. some reason that was it. but we have to talk about because i actually I, I i actually tweeted i was watching the episode right and i tweeted at the moment where it went to you know what appeared to be a flashback and i went flashback i thought i was done with this shit at least flashback and it was like we're on the island there's this guy on a boat going to the island and he's you know he finds a bit of the boat it says you know queen on it and i'm like oh what are we doing this bullshit and then the ending pissed me off because I, I won't get too specific here just in case you've not watched lost but i will say this little swerve is directly out of an episode of lost only not even remotely as effective <laughs> might i add i don't think it's fair for it to piss you off because at least it's shaking it up well well it's pissing me off because it's just ripping off what my favorite episode of lost but i mean <laughs> I mean, fine. I mean, it's literally, literally my favourite moment I lost was was this reveal on Lost. No way. So yeah, it's just not a flashback. It's a flash yeah. forward. And this yeah. this guy is William. Because that's what we wanted. We wanted grown up William. And for some reason, Roy is on the island in the, in the, the arrow suit. Um, it is. Uh, I saw, um, I, did, I did see a, a picture in an interview afterwards. It's, mm. it's his red suit. Which you know the one he gave to Thea. It was so dark. I just assumed it was the green one, but I did too at the yeah. time, and I was way too drunk to tell. Yeah, I- I'll be honest. I was so dry. I didn't realize it was Roy at first. <laughs> uh, so it was when they revealed this that I went. Well, I- I've been thinking Roy all episode for the Green Arrow dude, but I'm like, now that we've seen him in the future, it's like I don't. I feels too 
Easy. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know either. But I mean, especially since would, would Roy be wanting to like kill people with the list, like you know, OG yeah, I don't Oliver? Know. I don't know why, but uh, who else knows about the list? I don't know. And he's wearing like a mask as well, like that covers his entire mouth as well. It's worth mentioning that. So it really can. What I want is for them to tell us it's Prometheus and he came back to life somehow. What really gets me about this is this is them admitting, because they want to conceal the guy's identity from us, is that they're admitting that the actual mask doesn't do shit. So they had to add like a whole extra mask to actually conceal it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just pointing that out. No, definitely. Um, I don't mind that it's a flash forward because. At least it's something different. I don't necessarily like it. I'm like, I'm not going whole oh, flash forward. If we get if we get these stupid flash forwards with transitions every episode, I am I don't care if it's shaking things up. I don't like I've, it. I've got some bad news for you. I can't guarantee it'll be every episode, but the new showrunner did say for the rest of the show's life it will be flash forwards. The sh- not the season. The show's life. Show's life. What, we're getting this whole future timeline with Roy? I don't know if it'll always be Roy and William, whatever, but it, it, the, the flashbacks... Uh, again, maybe, maybe this won't be you know extensively true. Maybe we'll get flashback here or there when it's relevant to characters. So, so we seriously only went one season without flashbacks constantly, only for them to go, hey, we're going to introduce them again, but we'll just turn it around. Yeah. All right, now I'm pissed. Yeah. Now I'm pissed. Sorry. Because... The flashbacks were dragging this show even further down than it already was for years. Seasons 3, 4, and 5's flashbacks are all complete garbage. And they just did nothing but waste time. Yeah. Hey, but, uh, you, you got flash forwards for the... Uh, basically for the rest of time, because that's how long it's going to be till CW cancels this. I, want, I wonder if Roy is even going to be in present day then. Because we know he's a regular this year in terms of the cast. So they can, they can just do him in the flash forwards they can i feel like he's only eventually pop up in present day though i would think so i was too what was william's reaction to him did, did he recognize him oh yeah he knew who he was because he pulled out yeah. a little arrowhead and says hey i'm oliver queen's son he knew who he was i think right that was it okay so he goes you know he's, he's introducing himself like roy doesn't know who he is so can this be Roy in present day and having that much of an interaction with the group as a whole? Oh, he can, because he's, he's changed so much. He's not seen him since he's been an adult, but I think you can see him as a okay, kid. And enough. even if he does show up, William's in bone school. He's not even here. Oh, that's true. He's pissed off. <laughs> Wait, does that mean we're rid of the actor? For the most part. That'd be nice. It would, wouldn't it? That'd be an upside. I'll take it. Because, I mean, I'm not... I still like the character because it's, had, it's just been a whiny little bitch. But mm-hmm. I mean, I can't complain about the acting of this guy yet. I've, I've not really seen any of it. True, yeah, there's not a lot of him in this one to really uh, judge. I can't, I can't say he's a good actor, but I, I can't say he's bad. There's nothing there. So he could be an upgrade. I mean, it would hard for him not to be an upgrade. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, sorry. Get used to the flash forwards. That's arrow. All right, I, I want bets here. So I'm fully expecting them to actually bring him out because they need the Green Arrow back. Because this, this is the thing. Everyone knows he's the Green Arrow now, Oliver, right? They're, they're calling him Arrow to his face in prison, which is at least interesting in terms of dynamics. I'm like, okay, okay, that's different. There's no putting that cat in the bag. Exactly, unless we get some Constantine magic spell or something to <laughs> wipe it. So, okay, whatever. But here's the thing. So I'm thinking the way he gets out is that something bad happens in the city and they need the Green Arrow, and they want him out there, and they yeah. ask, they get, they bring him out of prison and say, "Hey, save the city for us." That's what I'm expecting, and I'm expecting it before the crossover. Although, if we're doing Elseworlds, technically, all the Oliver Queens we see could just be from other Earths. So, whatever. Yeah. Do you know what? That's something we have to give this episode credit for. Mm-hmm. Oliver's still in prison at the end. That's true. I I, I, mean, I, I still give it like five episodes max. No, I do as well, but it's beaten Flash. And I'm being optimistic with that. <laughs> it's it's beaten Flash at the start of its season status quo setups. Oh, I'm not going to compare it to that. I'm going to compare it to when Flash was in prison, which, for the record, I think was three episodes. Three episodes. Okay. I was I was fe- 
I think, fairly, comparing it to the start of the season, you know, where, oh, we left him there, he's gone, and then, okay, he's back now. Hmm. Yeah, but at least the prison thing in Flash was a, a mid-season thing, at least. So it was, it was still yeah. kind of a... I mean, I think the trial was after the break as well, but, you know, once he went into prison, it was like, here's your three episodes of prison. Sure, three episodes. We got, we got that to beat. So... Yeah, okay. Was yeah. that Well, we mentioned The Flash, and it's dealing with its previous season's things. Now, we already had the premiere last week, so this is episode two of season five. It is uh, called Block. So, to its credit, it never really gave us the bullshit cliffhanger. I mean, it gave us a cliffhanger, but the thing it set up was something we're keeping for the whole season, pretty much, so. Yeah. You know, it introduced Nora, and it's like, okay, so now we have Nora, and... Yeah, she's around. That's He's... a thing. She's a regular, so Ooh. we're definitely keeping. What? I think this cast list has spoiled something. Oh no! I'm, I'm going to have to go and see so we're on equal footing. It's uh, what? Because Tom Cavanaugh, of course, was not in the episode, but what he's credited as as credit only is a different type of wells. I don't believe we have seen yet. <laughs> Interesting. I will go and see. Just uh, so that I can go whether or not it is interesting or not. Blocked. Tom Cavanaugh, where is he? Oh, uh, okay. He was not part of the Council of Wells, was he? No, I don't believe so. I don't remember that version of Wells. I, I don't either. But, but it's I'm the, down for it. It's notable, though, that the name is enough that we know what type of character he's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Anyway, so what, what what do I what do I go with this? So so Nora's still around, and they kind of open the episode with them kind of admitting to everyone, okay, she isn't actually stuck here. That was all a ruse. Cisco's kind of pissed. He spent so much money buying tech <laughs> to 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 try and fix the problem. Where was it? Where was it? He wanted to go instead. I can't remember. Somewhere sunny. <laughs> it was. And they re- they reveal the, the newspaper thing, so I'm glad they're not keeping that a secret. That they're, they're being open about it. That's nice. Makes a change. Yeah. And I, I want to give credit to Iris. I like Iris's attitude here. She's like, you know what? We've changed the future multiple times. Remember, I was going to die all season. Yeah, remember that? We changed that. We'll change this too. Screw the future. Futures are a bitch. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for Nora to fade out of existence. <laughs> I I take that back. I like Nora. No, I like Nora too. It, so, I'll tell you what I liked about this one. It, it's, this is not as good as the premiere. I will say oh. that did just remind me of my other guest for uh, for Arrows. Oh God, uh, the Hood. It's Tommy. <laughs> I'm, take, I'm taking a page from the Flash book. And we're guessing it's Eddie. No, it's actually Eddie. It's, uh, yeah, it's actually Eddie. <laughs> um, anyway. So, so, carry on. so what I liked about this one, I liked that Iris actually had her own little subplot, and it wasn't just a random thing either. Hers was arguably more relevant to the main plot of the season. What she was doing, it was yes, because she was investigating how Gridlock died uh, to Cicada, and I will say this: so the opening scene of the episode, Cicada uh, is coming to this creepy, like you know, industrial basement, and he takes off his cloak, and we see Chris Klein, and he's all grim. He's acting very kind of edgy, and like mm. he belongs on Titans. Basically, it looks like he wants to be on Titans. He's like, mm. um, and I actually laughed out loud when a random dude just kind of walked behind him, and I went, "Is that like a henchman or something?" And then he just says, "Hey, you, you start so you look a bit rough," yeah. and I'm like, "Oh, he's just at work. This is him like going to work, and this other dude's just randomly asking him how he is," and I am like. Why is he looking this this angry and mean at work? <laughs> it just it made me laugh. It was yeah. just, the big guy just in the back, because I thought it was like a secret lair, and then just casually in the background, a guy in overalls walks into the fridge. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, oh, you've been in another fight? And he's like, yeah. Uh, it's like, you should see the other guy. Uh, and yeah. obviously, in the meantime, we're cut into the flashbacks of the fight. Yes, yes. Uh and obviously he, he, he wins uh, and whatnot. But so, so I was just looking into that, uh, which I kind of liked. I also liked that she casually at one point says to Barry, hey, can I use your lab for some some thing I'm working on? And he's like, yeah, sure. And he never stops to question why she specifically needs a lab. Um, and not that I think he'd even be mad that she wants to look at police footage because given what they do 
for Team Flash all the time, I don't think it, he'd it care. Like constantly, yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, it was just kind of weird how she never told him that. She's like, no, I'm going to go look at police footage of, you know, dashboard cams Felt and a little sketchy, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, she's investigating that, so I like that, uh, that it felt I, relevant. I, interesting that she went to him to, to get that access and not, you know, not Joe, right? Because Joe's a good enough cop to be like, wait a minute, I can't let you onto my computer at work. Are you kidding me? I'm a police <laughs> yeah, officer. Exactly. That's, that's that's sketchy. And you're a reporter, not to mention anything else. Yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll end badly. Somehow respect enough that Singh will give her uh, off-the-record comments. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I don't think I've seen much of those two interacting before, so it was kind of funny him being like, yeah, since it's you, Iris, I'll give you an off-the-record comment. And I think <laughs> that's a, something that, you know, we, we spoke about in Supergirl how some things seem to have just jumped ahead. Mm-hmm. Iris's journalism career, like you know, there, there was bit we did bits over the past. You know, that we we had to be a journalist, you know, and had a job. But yeah, it's been blog stuff for a while. She kind of fell away because part of the plot last year was that she kind of rediscovered it again. She kind of came back to it. Yeah, so it felt a little weird that things like oh, because it's you, like mm-hmm. they've got this really close relationship. And I mean, I you know, I get that they know each other and stuff, but. That this was nothing compared to Supergirl's jumps, though. No, it wasn't. That this felt a lot more kind of like, okay, but because we've seen our our actual newspaper job enough over the years that it's like okay. Yeah, yeah. And I'll it, let it slide. And I kind of buy this one is like, no, he just knows her well enough that he's like, yeah, sure, fine. Yeah, it's like all right, Joe's daughter, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um. So so and obviously she's still kind of skeptical that or you know looking at it and seeing how much Nora's with Barry. And she, she at least knows now that the reason why Nora cares about Barry so much is because she never got to spend time with him. So, so she understands that part of it, at least, even though she's still a bit jealous. She's still got the, the mummy jealousy. There is a, I think, a, a great moment, probably one of my favorite moments is uh, from uh, you know, uh, Nora, the, the acting, hmm. is um, when when Iris kind of says that realization. She's like, oh, you know, it's just, that, you know, that, you know you, you've hmm. not spent time with your dad before. And it cuts to, to Nora, and she just kind of looks down a little bit, like, okay, you know, we we, yeah. we know there's more going on, obviously. Yeah, we, we've just, been assuming that her relationship with, with, with Iris, Iris is not that great. not that great. But there's yeah. it's just that one look, like, Iris doesn't see her or anything. She just, you know, just just, just for us, but it's, it's a nice touch. Yeah, uh, and she's very eager. She wants to impress her dad, and she's like, no, I don't want to learn about physics. I want to learn how to do sonic punches and, and throw lightning. Oh, 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 she wants to sonic punch and out. Yeah. And she ends up messing up, and she puts them through a through, through the 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 glass board. <laughs> I was just gonna say, what do you call it? It's not a whiteboard. It's not I like a it. I like it though. I I, I I wish we had glass boards in school instead of the classics. It's cooler. <laughs> See, it's cooler. But I think the whiteboard is actually more useful. Like I can, I can see the black on a whiteboard from the back of a classroom. You put black pen on this clear glass board. I'm not seeing that from more than six feet away. That's why you have the white wall behind it. Yeah, but that's just too much effort, isn't it? And then you can double it up and it can be like a projection screen as well at the same time. You just have to wheel the glass out of the way. And all of a sudden... To, you... to, be, to be fair, in my later years of school, we just got smart projectors and they became the whiteboards. As, as, did, as did I. But the, the point is the glass boards are cool. Shut up. When they're cooler than the smart projectors. Yeah, it's like cool but low tech at the same time. It's lo fi. <laughs> lo fi, yes. Uh, so, anyway, so, so, so the training, and we've, we've got kind of a villain of the week. She's not a big deal. She's got a couple of scenes. Uh, she kind of, you know, block. She bl- puts people into blocks. <laughs> And that's basically it. I love how Sisk was depressed about you know not having not having a what's her face gypsy, gypsy. anymore. Yeah. Uh, like oh, and it's like to try and cheer him up. Barry's like oh, what what can we call this villain? She makes people into blocks. Sisko is like oh block. It just blocks. <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. It was. He's not in the mood. It wasn't not at all. But so so they go fight and Iris. Oh, no, it's not Iris. Sorry, Nora. Uh, so that's a fair slip to be honest. But uh, Nora kind of screws up because she's too eager to to get into the the mix of it. And Barry is actually the the sensible one for a change. But what I like about this is that we get this really fun sequence of him showing her footage of when he first became Flash and all the all the mess ups he had in the in the I, lab. I want to say you've overlooked the best scene of the episode at this point of the plot. Oh, go on then. What have I missed? It's the scene where before he knows, you know, what why he's showing her all this stuff is he goes to Joe. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and he's like, "What's going on? I don't 
get it. What's going on? Being a parent's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's just like, yeah, you're telling me. Uh, yeah, and Joe gives him this up. very specific example of something he did. And Barry's just like, yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I was fine. I acted perfectly normal in that situation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And, and proof once again that Joe is the best TV dad. Joe, Joe, I thought was real. I don't know if like uh, the actor, uh, if Jesse Martin was like, if there was a reason for this or if it's just a coincidence. But I noticed that almost every scene he had in this episode, he was sitting in a chair and he never got up. And I was, I think we're just going with the chill dad vibe. Because I was wondering if maybe he had like maybe he'd sprained an ankle or something, so they just rewrote his scene so that he was always sitting down in this episode. Yeah, I don't know. Could be. But, it was kind of weird how, like, um, we randomly had the telekinesis back. Which I complained about last episode. Yeah. Being like, well, it felt like that... Oh, it was go- Sorry, spent- I'll be rephrase that. It was randomly back last episode. It was randomly gone again at the start of this episode. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it randomly stayed was the point last episode. And I, I said it kind of undermined the whole thing of last season. But then it was fading away. And then Cecile doesn't want it to fade away. She tries to get tech for it. And, and it's definitely in the baby. And it's unhealthy. I can see that. Because it, yeah. it's it's that moment where she first, you know, she leans over the baby and she's like, I, I can't hear her. And then it lingers on the baby. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that matter for years, though. Because the baby's going to be too small. Until the baby can speak, what's the point? Cause, because the baby's going to learn how to project. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, so here's the thing. So, so they, they go to get, get Villain Lady Block and... They get her, uh, and it's actually Nora who gets to shame. Barry gets trapped, the uh, you because know, incompetence is his middle name. Cubed. Yeah, and so we get. Do you know what I like about her? It was kind of like how they, they sort of separated Wally a little bit in one of the crossovers. We said, "Oh, it's cool they treated the speed differently." And what I like about Nora so far is that she did like this parkour thing, which didn't just run; she parkoured just around. Little flips and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. That's different. That's cool. That, that separates her from Barry and how she moves. I like it. Uh, and she saves the day. She wins. But then Cicada shows up and just kills the, the the villain right there and there, and then I had a moment. I was like, "What? Hang on, where did that dagger come from?" Because Cicada steps out, he's like, you know, twenty feet away. Mm. I'm like, "What the hell? Physics, people!" Yeah, but then they revealed that it's like Mjolnir, and he can, he can. And I was like, "All right, I'm in." Yeah, <laughs> but, that's, yeah. That's, how, that's how Cisco explains it. It's like Mjolnir. But that that was my reaction. I saw that. I was like, "What the hell?" And then, okay, I'm sold. Cicada's cool. He still looks terrible, and he's yeah. he, the voice is pretty terrible. Yeah, I, but I do. On the dagger. I do like though the. It's, I mean, it's a little bit similar to some of the Devo stuff, but I do like the idea that his his dagger can just take away the powers of everyone else, and it kind of it's it's different from. Oh, how does the speed not work this time? It's just no. He's just an heavy speed. Barry has to try and punch him. <laughs> yeah, and he's almost dead. He almost dies, and then Nora shows up and. Cicada seems to recognise her. Because she shouts out he dad. Does. And now you could take it as just him going dad, as if like if he doesn't understand that. But the way the camera tracks into his face as he looks at her I was like, oh no, he I think he recognises her. Yeah, I agree. He he knows who that is. And then he just leaves. Yeah. And she knows who he is because later on Iris has got the footage up from the, her investigation. She's like, it's the same sound as the, the gridlock murder. Uh, it's like, what does that sound like? And she's like, it's a cicada. And no, 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 it's Cisco who who says it because he still gets to name them all. No, it's it's, it's Nora. No, no, she says it, it, it's Cisco. Is like says like an insect, like a cicada, and and then she's like, oh. No, 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 she says it. You're misremembering this. He, I'm sure he said it. You're misremembering this because he says he does say it's like an insect, and then she says, yeah, it's like a cicada, and then they mm. all turn around and go, what cicada? Who's that? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, I'll find you on this. I'm sure of this one, but yeah. So she knows who the villain is, and we'll, I'm sure that she'll she'll reveal some some details, or she'll try and avoid it because she thinks it's too dangerous to reveal details. I think or I think we're going that route because of the the reaction that we got here at the end was mm. a bit because she didn't immediately spill it. It was like okay, I don't. She she kind of just when when they ask her what's going on, she kind of just shakes her head a bit. It's like no, not oh, not this time. Weird. Yeah, uh, the subplot this episode was outside of viruses. One, of course, was, was the fantastic. Was it was okay? I, I wasn't feeling some of it in the middle. I I was feeling everything with Ralph. R- Ralph was trying to cheer. Well, Ralph and Caitlin were trying to cheer up Cisco, 
Um, we had the Book of Ralph, which was like his getting over a breakup guide. There was a, a fantastic shot before that when, um, well, yeah, you know, when, when K- Caitlin's walked in on Cisco with the the gypsy holograms, mm-hmm. and it's like, "What you doing?" and and she's like, "Okay, we need to." And and, Ra- and she gets Ralph in there, and the pair of them are just leaning over his shoulder, being like, "Oh, we got you." I thought, okay, he's in for a, an atrocious time. Yeah, you yeah, had the makeover thing. It was kind of, it was kind of fun. I wasn't super feeling it, but it was it was it was it was mildly amusing. I was never loving it. It was just mildly amusing most of the time. Um, what I, what the part I did think was fun because it ultimately becomes that Caitlin's doing this because she wants to avoid her own thing about finding out about her dad. She doesn't want to find out. And the, the funniest moment I actually had was actually. When Cisco and Ralph get so uncomfortable doing the thing that they were doing for Cisco, that they say, "Oh, maybe we should focus on Caitlin's thing." Yeah, let's get onto that, and they both just go over to her like bit of paper, the certificate, and let's like, vibe this bad boy. And Caitlin has to like tell him not to. I got a, a laugh out of that because it, it, that's actually kind of the most that Cisco snapped out of it. The whole episode is that they got uncomfortable and they just had to shift yeah. to something else. The, the rest of it was it was just fine. It was like it, was, it wasn't doing it in super great for me. I, just, I had fun with Ralph being Ralph. Sure. No, because I, I, I think that. we went so long without that that it's nice just to have that back on a regular basis. Yeah, it, it wasn't the best Ralph's been, but it was. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was like I say, it was mildly amusing for, yeah. for for the duration. Uh, but that was that was Flash. Uh, not as good as the premiere, I don't think. Um, I would agree, but pretty solid. Villain of the week, you know, was whatever. She just kind of served a plot purpose and nothing else. Um, Cicada at least is a foreboding villain, although I'm still not sold on the look, the voice, or the. I, I have a, a question because it doesn't. Yeah. I, you know, the bar- Barry and the others—they got their, their powers back at the end, right? Yeah, they all had the power sort of slowly come back. Yeah. It, do they just come back when he when it, uh, over time when they're away from the dagger? Uh, what do do we have any... the, the way I took it was that. It's not that it just takes their powers completely. It's that it sort of sucks all the the meta energy out of them at the time, so it just kind of na- naturally sort of comes back over the okay. period. It's it's kind of like how sometimes some like interpretations of Superman where he's zapped by Kryptonite, he has his powers gone for a while, and it just sort of gradually yeah, builds yeah. up okay, again. Okay. No, no, I'll, I'll take it. That, that's I'll, what I'll it seemed just... like in this episode, anyway. I mean, if they tell me otherwise later, then. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do it for now until they go into it, which I'm sure they will at some point to try and counter it. Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, they'll, they'll try and figure out a way to to, to battle it. Yeah, uh, but hey, so that yeah, no, was, was, was not a bad flash. Like, uh, the, the season's not tanked yet, which we we feared it might. <laughs> and it still might, but hey, we're, we're two for two. Two for two, just uh, twenty one left to go. <laughs> It's daunting. It's daunting, all right? Uh, okay. Which does take us on to Black Lightning, Season 2, Episode 2. It is the Book of Consequences, Chapter 2, which uh, Black Jesus I, Blues. I think is the first thing we need to talk about. Uh-huh. Title sequence? Think, yeah, that wasn't that, that last week, right? It was. I noticed it last week. Really? Yeah, they had, they had that, like, like that... Not animated. Well, it is animated, but like, you know, not like a cartoon, but like the yeah. Well, the draw. Like, I, this week, I, I think it was a different drawing last week. But it's like the red and white, and like this was Nissa this week that was on the. I image. didn't notice it at all last week. I kind of most of the time I kind of just fade out over opening sequences after you know a season of a show because mm. I'm like, okay, I've seen this, I know what it is. I just don't pay attention. Yeah. Well, the regular one's still there where it says Black Lightning, but yeah, they had this as well. Right, which is why I don't think I noticed it. Like, this week, it really stuck out to me. Yeah. Uh. So. So yeah, this kind of progressed everything uh, that we've, you know, we, we set up last week. Issa is still alive, that's the kid who died and came back and seems to make people tell the truth, which led to a glorious scene when, when Lynn brought him home for dinner, yep. and everyone just started being very blunt with each other, <laughs> <laughs> repeatedly. It, yep. What I thought was really nice for Jennifer is that she like quickly makes them feel better, because she, she just deduces, okay... It works when you look at people. Look away. Let's test it. And she tells him lies when he when he's not looking at her. It's like okay, that's how it works. Now you know how to control it. You know how to like make it work for you. And I'm yeah. like, and this is good for her because she wants to control her powers and she's not figured it out yet. But this is almost like a hey, you might be able to. You might be able to figure this out. It's more complicated than his, but but there's probably a way. 
Yeah, I like that she's been proactive like that. That was that was that was nice. I I will say, uh, Nissa and Jennifer are far too. Far too positive about discussing their parents having sex. I feel I feel like most people don't like to talk about their parents having sex. I I would agree, but it did set up last season that they're pretty open as a family. I don't care who's open. No one wants to think about their parents having sex. No, I don't no, care. Don't. Like I, no. this is not it's, it's, when it's the parents thinking about their kids. I mean, even though they don't like to think about it either for the same obvious reasons, at least. There's, there's like, a, oh, they have to grow up, they have to spread their wings and do their own thing, we have to kind of accept that it's their choice at a certain point, and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of reasons to try and be liberal and whatnot. But the other way around, you just don't want to think about it. It's just, it's disgusting. <laughs> you don't want to... It is, but it all comes back to your favourite scene from last season. I, oh, I love that scene from last season. It's the best right. scene of the show. Right. It all <laughs> comes back to that is, they're just really, really honest and open with each other about yeah. all of this. Yeah. I did and laugh it's unnatural it. and, and, and weird. I agree with that. But I, I that's did, just how they are. I did love Jennifer saying to Nessie, you better go out and find a new girlfriend cause before you dry up. <laughs> that, that did make me laugh. Yeah. Um, so, no, I mean, the family dynamics, the sister like dynamics between those two especially has always been yeah. pretty strong. Um, I think this episode wasn't as strong as the first one, mainly because it was just moving everything forward a little bit. Um, but I think that, that's actually pretty one of the overall critiques I'd have of the show as a whole sure is that it, it kind of does that a lot where individual episodes maybe don't feel stand out and amazing because it just it, it's just very consistent it moves along it chugs on and it's three or four episodes later when you go okay here's everything it was building to yeah i did love the final scene though yeah i the final scene was really good because obviously we knew last week that he was stepping down as, as principal uh this week his, his friend from the board came again and it was basically, hey, right, the the board wants you to 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 go and be like very publicly and you know endorse the new principle and so on. But he's really emphasising it. And like at first he's like, why are you even you know? Of course, that was my idea. Of course, I'm going to endorse the new. And then he sort of pauses and says, wait a minute, he's white, isn't he? And it becomes this this debate about that. Um, and he you know ultimately is going to accept to do this. And we get that the final scene of the episode is him. He's got an assembly. Which is impressive given the school's still shut, by the way, because he even mentions in this scene that when the school opens again, I won't be principal. So yeah, the school... I, I, <laughs> school... I think it might be the most implausible thing in the show that yeah. he managed to get all the students back into school when it's not open. But he you know, he tells them all, and they're all upset that he's not going to be there, and he answers one of our questions because he says he's still going to be a teacher. He's actually just staying at the school, which is yeah, cool. One of my concerns last week was, okay, are we shifting away from the school and it was a concern because a lot of the CW shows. If anything, I actually kind of like this more because he's going to have more of a set group of characters that he's going to interact with constantly, right? I mean, not necessarily. But he might do. We may get a few more students who we get to come to know because they're always in his class. But we could go down that path. I mean, maybe, but they teach a lot of different classes, right? At that point. That depends. I don't know what he taught. I don't know if they've ever mentioned what his subject was. No, but I mean, if if you're the the one music teacher for the school, you're gonna teach. Oh, sure, not in school. a real world context, sure. But how many TV shows do you always only ever see the the one teacher's class, right? The one class that we're going to spend time on because it's the oh, one we're going to remember. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. So, but the point I'm making is, is there's, there's potential for those kids if they want to do that if they want to have if, some if of these to, yeah. these relationships with some of the kids because there's, there's a couple of the kids that I recognise the faces of from last season you know the one who stands up and shouts he was absolutely around last season I recognised yeah. him I couldn't tell you his name but he was around and it's really sweet because you know he gives him, gives him this speech about leaving and sticking around and he's very honest he's like okay hey, like the reason why this is happening is because you know, the attacks happened i wasn't here and i have to you know answer to that and and uh you know like i'd expect all of you to right to, yeah. to to accept the consequences of what you've done um and the the, the one kid stands up and this is the thing and this is, this is a funny thing i would never have been able to repeat this to you if you'd asked me what it was but as soon as he said it I was like, oh, this is this is the thing he said to the kids last year, you know, yeah, when he was I trying to, to thought, motivate okay. them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he's like, he's, he's he's walking halfway off the stage, and the kid shouts, you know, "Where's the future?" or whatever the line is. And he's like, he turns around and he pauses for a second, goes, "It's right here." 
And then the, the kid, all the kids together, because they've all heard this from him probably hundreds of times because this is his pep talk. Yeah. They all say the next thing and he smiles and he steps in and says the next part, the next answer. And then he finishes it and he's got this big grin on his face. And it's this, I thought it was a really sweet ending. I um, agree. Now, admittedly, I don't think I ever encountered any teacher who had this, type, this good a relationship with the kids when I was in school. But that's kind of the charm of the show, right? Is that we, we, we can fantasize to an extent that maybe there is a teacher like this who is this close with the kids, who does care this much. There yeah. is this tight knit community. Um, but I was like, okay, that was sweet. I like the ending. Seen the episode. I did too. So, I agree with that. It was it yeah. was nice. Um, so yeah, uh, the big plot of this one is that uh, one of the girls gets out the pods and is having a psychotic break. She she controls wind like he does electricity. So she's, she's like, an airbender. She's an airbender. Yes, uh, and she's using her airbending, and they eventually capture. Um, uh, and Joe is funny about this. We've, we've had very little, like just the the meta of the week episodes of this show, that it was actually kind of exciting having like a meta running wild. It outside. was a little jarring. I'm like, I'm not used to this. Uh, that's fair. Yeah, it never even became like the the main focus of the plot in the sense that they they, oh, they drop everything to stop it. No, yeah, no, the, the, the catching her very much was more about like Nissa's attitude changing a little bit mm. and about how she was acting. She was a bit gloating a little bit, you know essentially doing press with the, the public and be like, oh yeah, I'll take photos with you, I'll do high fives. Yeah. You know, cheering and, and whatnot. Yeah, uh, Grace is back as well. Grace is not very thrilled to see her with a, a new new lady friend who she no, just sees in this episode. Um so so we have that going on. Uh and like so we had Jennifer Khalil came to speak to Jennifer after getting the shit beat out of him from Tobias. Yeah. That's because he's awful at chess, though. <laughs> because he's awful. At... Also, because he let cyanide die. That was that was the other Probably thing. Probably that too, but just don't be shit at chess. Yeah, Tobias. Tobias, his thing this episode was basically he was going around and wiping out people who were loose ends for whatever he's planning, and we don't quite know what he's planning yet. Well, we know yeah. that part of it's uh, dealing in metahumans, like, like as in like an arms dealer. Yeah. But more than that, we don't know exactly what he's going to be doing. Uh, but he's going around like killing people for f- to that end. So that's obviously setting up stuff for for going forward. I did like how natural it felt. You know the the the, uh, the older guy that he, that he was talking to. Yeah, they they, they seem genuinely close. They did, and and he was like, "Hey, you remember that that time when we did that?" And, and the guy's like, "Of course, how can I gonna forget?" They're reminiscing, and the and he's like, and "He's like, damn, I really wish you didn't remember." Yeah. And the guy's like, "Uh, loose ends. I get it." Yeah, he understands. And then the corrupt cop. Who's who's clearly less close with? He's just he's been friendly, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, and then kills him. So so that's bubbling over where we're setting up uh, Tobias. Stuff. I do still like Tobias as a villain though. I do as well. Obviously, the story wasn't complete at the end of the last season. I'm glad he was. They clearly had had plans for him to be around for a while. Uh, yeah. You know, whether that's to the end of this season, the end of next season, whatever it may be. Mm. But he's got a good presence though. He does. He does. Uh, and then Jennifer basically, well, first of all, she pushes Khalil off the roof <laughs> and then tells him to piss off. Yeah. Um, but she's trying to hide her powers, especially. Uh, and she's trying to control her powers. And clearly her powers are tied to her emotions. She has to kind of let her control that. Um, which, by the way, I like that this is basically, yeah, I, I still work out a lot because if I'm in better shape, I can hold my breath for longer. And the more I hold my breath, <laughs> the the longer uh, my powers uh, like work. Point, I was like, yeah, yeah, and more invulnerable, yada, 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 powers. You're still loving it. I get it. <laughs> She's like, oh, they're only dangerous when you want them to be dangerous. And apparently one of the un, uh, the unintended side effects of the powers is that they don't get cramps when they're when they're having their periods. Yeah. Uh, sure. Do you know what, see, uh, makes sense to me for um, Vanessa. Oh, go on. Yeah, you know, just with, with what her powers are, right? Sure. With the invulnerability. But... I'm intrigued to see how that plays in for for Jennifer. I don't think you're going to see how it plays into it. <laughs> no, no, but just if it's if it's trying to explain to me, you know, if it's uh, is this just a a side effect, right, a byproduct? Is all 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 the girls that this happens to? Is it the same for all of them? Yeah, we, or is we, it to, or is it something that's to do with what their power is and it, how that? Well, when she speculates, does it mean we can't have kids? And this says, well, no, Dad had kids. But does it affect them differently? Does, does it, like is it actually stopping the cycle because of the powers, right? right? And that's just the, the truth of it. Whereas it didn't affect Jefferson the same way I, because he's not got that cycle. I would say no. It doesn't. It doesn't affect the cycle. Okay. Because they don't say, oh no, no, it's it stopped. They just went, sure. no, no, there's no cramps. 
There's no cramps. There's no pain. Yeah. So uh, that, that's why I'm wondering if it's if it's a way their powers specifically affect the body. Maybe. I might be just thinking too much into it, but it was one of those things that just where it's it's a tiny little line, and I'm like, okay, run it's interesting. It. It's an interesting yeah. little thing. It is. Yeah. I don't know, no. Uh, Bill Duke's still around. He's still around trying to make Lynn do shady government experiments. Shady like, shenanigans. Hey, that guy who, who, that kid who lies or can spot lies, because we know he doesn't like lies. He was very clear about that first episode. He does not like liars. Yeah. Uh, he was like, oh, this, this kid could be useful. And we also find out the kid's dying. His power's killing him. Uh, and he could go in a pod until there's a cure, but he doesn't want to do that. He wants to... He'll, he'll run the risk. Yeah, he wants to use whatever time he's got left. So. Yeah. You know, now it was solid, solid enough. Lots of things moving forward. It's a very straightforward uh, episode, yeah. though, isn't it? What, what, what it was missing uh, was the really badass action stuff from last episode. Because last episode had a couple of really good action scenes. This week kind of missed that a little bit. But I, I know it's coming back because last season had it very consistently every couple of episodes. We'd get a really good yeah. action scene. So uh, I'll look forward to that coming back. I would but, say lacking on the Gamby as well. Yeah, he's just kind of there in a couple of scenes doing research. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's it's, it's again like we say, you know, it's moving slow. It's just ticking over, but there's nothing memorable with him. There's nothing there. There's no meat to it. There's nothing really to even talk about with him, which is a little disappointing, I think. Sure, sure. It's got, it's got a bit of a bigger cast. We have to rotate through them. Yeah. As long as so. he doesn't become the Thea or the Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, but no. Uh, that is that is that is the, that is the episode. Uh, so that finally brings an end to all the shows this week, all five of the blo- bloody things. Um, now it is worth mentioning this went probably a bit longer because we had it was the first ever Titans and we had two premieres to talk about. So hopefully it's a little bit shorter. <laughs> uh, hopefully on yeah. a regular week. Uh, but yeah. So what we do at this point of the show is we pick our favorite episode of the week. So why is it Titans, Connor? <laughs> No, um, do you know what? I think it will be interesting for the for the next little while as well. Mm-hmm. We can do a worse, and it won't necessarily just be Arrow. <laughs> That's true. Um, as for best, I'm I'm gonna go with Flash. Actually, I think it was it was not as good as last mm. week's, but I think it was pretty fun, and it had a lot going for it still. Whereas, uh, but like you say, it was. Solid. It, you know, it just moving the piece forward. It's one of those episodes that is great as part of the overall whole when you just you know when you binge watch in the future, but it, it doesn't stand out right now. Yeah. Um it's kind of a tough week. I, I, f- I felt like across the board, like the the, the the better shows were kind of all just kind of solid enough outings. Yeah. Uh with not nothing super stand out. Um which for, which is why I'm probably gonna go with Black Lightning actually, because I think the final scene in Black Lightning was probably my favourite scene of the week. So I think for that reason, I'm going to go with that. I uh, yeah, I can't argue with that. So I think the the only other scene that rivals it is uh, is Barry and Joe. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. Um. Yeah. That's it. So, not 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 a, not a, a a tough. I mean, it was it was a tough pick, but it wasn't like a tough fight. It wasn't like there was two amazing episodes fighting it out for for the for the win. No, it which was... has happened occasionally, but it's always it's less interesting when it's like okay the. They're all all right, but it is kind of nice how we're going to have five or six to pick from for a while. Like it's going to be. Oh, we're going to, we're going to have four to pick from. <laughs> hey, things could get better. You don't know. <laughs> well, right now it gets worse of the week. You don't know. Uh, when Doom Patrol starts. Ah, oh, yeah. See, that uh, that might shake things up a bit. That might shake things up. Then we get the Swamp Thing and Star Girl. Like, and we got throw options. Krypton back in at some oh, point, Krypton, which yeah. kind of surprised us. You know, last season and and. Oh, because that's what we need—a seventh show, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, Black Lightning will be done by then. Yeah, or Legends, one of the two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that is that is the, that's the week show. That is whatever number we're on of television from the multiverse. It's been a long episode, actually. Uh, let us know what you think of this week's episodes in the comments below. Uh, and like and subscribe and all that stuff get us on the twitters at DC Comics Podcast for your DC Comics needs uh, you can get me on twitter at wibble89 should you j- wish where can they find you j- ginger menace it, it says there at Connor Ryan 94 but I had to struggle to read that that white on that red does not work just 
needs a needs a better border or something. How much have you had to drink? Absolutely nothing. I'm, I'm taking a day off after a week of incredibly heavy drinking <laughs> before I go back to work. Yes, 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 yes. Um, well, that's why I get you to say it, mainly for the audio people, but still, the point being... It is, is but the point is, for me, make that easier to read so that I, I don't have to go through this every week. Me, 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 me. Bigger black outline. Me, 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 me. Uh, but that, that is the show. Of course, if you don't know, we do a, a comic book podcast called Comics from the Multiverse, which is all, well, not all, but a lot of the DC comics every week reviewed. That's the two of us plus Matt. Uh, we do that as well, so check that out. Um, if you want to support the show or the channel and everything we do here, go to patreon.com slash TV, and you can support us from as little as a dollar per month and get some bonuses, get some things early, and so on and so forth. Uh, but we appreciate it if you go and check it out. Uh, and that is us, I think. I think that's everything. I, be- I believe that's everything. Um, yeah. I, you know. Uh, should be a little bit earlier next week. I should be, yeah. That's, that's what I was recording later. We should be recording this on Thursdays going forward, meaning that it will be up early, early Friday. So that that is what the, the, the plan is week to week now. Uh, assuming we get all six bloody episodes <laughs> watched in time for that. But we should be able to. We should be able to. Uh, so that's the plan. So, so Titans will always be the oldest thing we're reviewing um, on the show. Which is kind of a, a shame for the DC Universe service. Be, you know, okay, we're, they're the, the flagship going forward. But there, there, there has to be a line. There has to be a cut-off. And it's just, that's when we can record it, given where all the other shows are. And just, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. I imagine when we get to Doom Patrol and, and Young Just... Well, probably not Young Just. Doom Patrol starting up. That'll get its own episode one thing. Probably, yeah. I think they all will. All the episode ones will get their own... With, with the exception of Young Justice, probably, because it's kind of just season three. Exactly. So, there we are. Television the Multiverse, guys. Thank you very much once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching dumb superhero TV shows, because what, what else are we going to do with our time? I don't know. We're millennials. Read a book. That's what we do. <laughs> we watch superhero shit. That's just what we do. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, guys. And always remember that sometimes we screw things up for the better. Thank you.